Topic cracking, man. All right, brothers and sisters, y'all see what it is. Tonight's topic, all women pastors must be canceled. All right, they must be canceled. Right, that's First Timothy 2 and 11. If you think, if you don't think they should be canceled, hey, come to the stage, bring your strong reason, use the scriptures, and prove your cause. All right, it's biblical smoke. Y'all know what time it is. We use the King James Version of the Bible to show and prove everything. So, Come to the stage, raise your hand. You got something on the topic? We'd like to know your thoughts. All right. Mish, where you at? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's why I said uh, we calling out all these women pastors. They got to be stopped. Um, They're not helping our people. Uh, They're keeping our people destroyed. They're keeping our people in sin, most of all. And they're keeping our daughters whores. Because, you know, these these uh, son, these, these uh, Christian, uh, these women pastors, you know, they're some of the biggest hoes around here, too, man. Who? Yeah, you see yeah, man. Oh, these, there's something right there. I'm yeah, telling you, man. You, yeah, you, you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you turn on YouTube and you, you, you turn on YouTube, they're preaching, man. They got on the tightest dresses, they got all their cleavage showing. Telling you, man. I seen a, I seen a, a sister preaching in leggings. Come on now. Hey, you see it all, man. Hey, hey, you'll see it all, man. I'm talking about the law has done away with with them. I'm talking about, man, look. They are all in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And the Lord always talking to them. The Lord, Lord talking to them. Always. Yeah, Lord, Lord, Lord said this. He tell he didn't tell her to put on no pants though. I mean, put on no dress. Take out them pants and put on a dress. Man, how people bugged out, man. Yeah. Yeah, these the, the women pastors, man, they, they be the first one want to lay hands on people too, man. They 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 call you up. They let me lay let me lay hands on. You. They go they go they go around the whole church touching everybody, putting demons on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, hey, man, hey, I know some of them witches, though. A lot of these women, they witches. You know what I'm saying? The men, too, but a lot of these, they, they are witches. You remember the scripture said that the Lord said he ain't going to suffer a witch to live. That's what we talking about them, man. I'm telling you, I know a damn, I know a woman was a witch when uh, when I came into the troop, of, when I was, like, in the Christian church and stuff like that, man. Uh, there was this damn woman, man. I was in church. I ain't going to lie. This, this was, like, um, Man, this was the early 2000s, man. My mom invited me to a revival. And this woman, man, she was up there. I'll never forget it. She was light-skinned. She had on a damn miniskirt. She was teaching. And I'm in church, man. I got drugs in my pocket. I got weed and everything in my pocket, smelling like weed. And she was just laying hands on everybody. They were falling out. She came towards me, and she just looked at me. She already knew I wasn't going for that shit. And she just looked at me and just started talking, man, telling me, Stuff that was going on in my life, hell, I'm thinking, how the hell does she know this stuff? And I realized that she was a damn witch. You know what I'm saying? She was telling me stuff about my dad, and my daddy was dead. And she she would just tell talking. I tell look, 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 don't put your hands on me now. I was in that high too. I said, look, don't look, I ain't finna stand up and do none of that. Uh, but yeah, so these women prophets, man, they they got an evil spirit on them. They witches, they sorcerers. Uh, wizards, <laughs> hey, they are possessed with the devil. If you think, hey, if you, if, if you, if you, uh, you think contrary, you know, feel free, you know, to invite your pastor, your woman pastor, into this room tonight, and let's see, you know, if, if she's ordained by God or the devil. Hey, make make sure she can speak in tongues. Yeah, yeah. See, let's see if she ordained by God or if she ordained by the devil. You know. Do this. Yep, yep. So, hey, y'all hit us up at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. Topic of the night all women pastors must be counseled. First Timothy 2 and 11. So, make sure y'all share the room, share the room. 
you know, if y'all looking for a beginner's booklet, y'all can hit us up at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. So, uh, you know, son been going into it. We got a hot topic tonight. You know, we need these women pastors to be stopped. You know what I mean? They the main corporate of why the black, Hispanic, and Native American communities are in shambles. We get, the women lead the household, right? Can I get, can I get a script, son? You don't mind? Yeah, 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 go ahead. Hey, Caleb, what's that? Give me Jeremiah, is it 30, 20, 31, 22? Yes, Compassion sir. Man? Yes, sir. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31 and verse 22. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. See, that's what's going on today, y'all. It's a new... You seen all these women pastors around here? You got Juanita Bynum, George Myers, Paula White, all these other black uh, black preacher ladies around here. Read that. Read that last part again. A woman shall compass a man. Hey, listen, y'all. That's a new thing in the earth. The most I say, say a woman shall compass a man. You got. You got more women opening up churches than men because all the men is leaving the churches. So who's left to run them? The women. And a, and a few straggling men that's hanging around, right? It's only about five of them. Hey, hey, they, they just trying to get some ass. I'm just gonna that's be it. That's they, it. They just trying to get some ass. But that's the point, brothers and sisters. A woman shall compass a man. The woman lead the household in the black community. The woman lead lead the churches in the black community. They lead the family. What it? Nobody, nobody. When we grew up, we say we everybody going to Big Mama house, right? Nobody, nobody said nothing about Granddaddy. It was all we we going we going to Big Mama house. Big Mama gonna cook, you know what I mean? She gonna cook Sunday dinner. We gonna get it in, blase blase. But nobody said, hey, we going to Granddaddy house because the woman has always been set at presidents in the black community. Why? Because we've been destroyed as a people. Give me Hosea 4 and 6. And yeah, we got Prophetess Nadine down there. Come on up, Prophetess Nadine, and uh and give up give us a word, Prophet Prophetess Nadine Forrest. Send you an invite. Just to come on up in and speak your peace. Yeah, come on up. The book Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Uh-huh. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. You see that? The Mosai say his people are destroyed, destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And you know who's enhancing that destruction to this very day? The black woman. Well, the black preachers. All these women out here preaching in the black community saying they called by God, they prophetess, they bishops. And let me tell you something. A woman can't be no bishop. Every time I hear that, that a woman is, is a bishop, that thing make me cringe. <laughs> For real, hey man, hey, that is crazy though. You know what I'm saying? It's like they don't, they own, they omit those scriptures out of the Bible. They take a black highlighter and they just mark that out. Like that ain't what God meant. That ain't what, um, you know. And they don't understand that they are they are causing our people to err. Hey, give me that right quick in Isaiah three and twelve. You know what I'm saying? They they are causing our people to go in error because ain't none of them teaching the law of the God. They all teaching the white man, white supremacy doctrine that uh, we ain't got to keep the law. The Old Testament is done away with and everything is about your season and your blessings is on the way. They some real good orators. They, they can speak and sing and wear a pencil dress, but as far as teaching the word of God and what our people need to be doing, in order to get out of this situation uh, that we're in, they don't know how to do it. They have no idea on how to do it. All they know how to do is tell people they blessing is on the way. They blessing, this is their season, and they blessing is on the way. Read that right quick. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3 and verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. See, when women rule over the community, Things are out of order. Our own children are oppressing us now. The more women pastors, the more weaker the community is. All right? For real. The more women teachers and preachers, all right, when it comes to the word of God, 
All right, the more Christian, let me put it that way, Christianity, Christian women, that's the weaker the community is going to be. This is why our communities are in shambles because the black men have been in in the back afraid to step up and, and you know and letting the coochie run the the whole neighborhood run the house they run the school they run everything and this is why our neighborhoods are in shambles right now this is why the young black men are running around emotional you know they shooting killing one another over basketball games you step on their shoe you talk about their mama you talk about their brother you talk about their dead homie and now emotions flare up and now somebody else is dead you know what i mean i got a uh, question out here all right just wait and we're gonna we'll get to your question but you know what let's go ahead let's get to it what's your question who is that i'm pastor cummings i got a question for you so are you saying that women cannot preach or they just can't pastor i just want to make sure i understand the context of what you're speaking i just came in the room okay i'll praise it all right we're gonna get the scripture all right, let's get the scripture in Timothy right quick. We're going to let the Bible speak because this is a Bible-based group. And hey, we want to thank you for coming out tonight, uh, Mr. E.T., you know what I mean? And uh, and the other people on stage. So yeah, we're going to let the Bible speak, all right? Because we never say that women can't teach, all right? Come on. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. To do what? Nor to usurp authority over the man. I nor to usurp authority over a man. So a woman can teach, all right, but she cannot usurp authority over the man. Who is she supposed to be teaching? Go to, uh, give me Titus 2. All right. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given so much wine, teachers of good things. So she's supposed to be teaching teachers of good things. What is good? Give me Romans 7. All right. She's supposed to be teaching good things. You know what I mean? So she's supposed to be teaching what is good all right so what is good according to the bible she's supposed to be teaching give me romans 7 i believe it's verse 12 right yes sir the book of romans chapter 7 and verse 12 wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good so she's supposed to be teaching the law statutes and commandments of god so when it says she's supposed to be teachers of good things go back to titus let's see who she's supposed to be teaching these things to all right let's see if it say the man the book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 4, that they may teach the young women. And that's a big job right there. She don't have no business in front of men trying to teach. The men, we have our job and duty to teach one another so we can build our communities. And the women have a mass job as well as teaching these young girls how to do what? How to keep the laws of God, how to dress, how to keep the dietary law. You know what I'm saying? How to keep ceremonial laws, how to how to be chaste. You know what I'm saying? Let, let go back to Titus. It's going to tell you all that what she's supposed to be teaching them, how to be virgins and stuff like that. It's supposed to be teaching them her womanly things, to, things that's going to help her growing, coming up in, in from uh, adolescence or uh, childhood into her womanhood. That's a big job right there. You know what I'm saying? But within itself, you know, especially the black woman today. Um, hey, our, our young black women are out of control out of control why because the woman has tried to do uh because the grown woman has taken on the leadership uh of the household and of the community when the man is supposed to be doing that all right and now this is why the daughters are out of control all right as well as the sons as well but read he reads that they may teach the young women to be sober all right, so these young women got to be taught, hey, you cannot get drunk. Our women be getting, all right, these young girls be getting lit out here to be sober. Stop getting high. Stop smoking weed. All right, stop doing drugs. Stop popping pills. They think it's cool to do it. That's a job within itself trying to teach these young women to be sober. Read. To love their husbands. To do what? to love their husbands you know how big of a job that is for the black woman to first learn how to get married herself 
and do what? And, and a lot of these women pastors are single and they at home with a dog. They're going to die alone with a dog. <laughs> they done divorced their husband that God gave them a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? Now they in the, uh, in the pulpit telling everybody they blessing on the way. And they don't know, they can't teach the young women to be married and uh, how to love their husbands because they don't got one and don't plan on having one. They like Glorilla. They F nigga free too. All right, come on. To love their children. All right, they got to learn to be taught how to love their own children. Do you know not know the black, the young black women do not know how to love their own children? They got their little girls. If you go to a HBCU parade or any kind of uh, neighborhood function uh, where black people are show showcasing talent, the first thing they do is get their little black girls out there and have them twerking in bathing suits, have them twerking in Daisy Dukes, have them doing all type of stuff, um, um, doing ballerina, all, all this stuff that's just obscene that they should need not be doing as little children. You know, uh, putting them on all this makeup, making them look grown and stuff like that. These young girls have to be taught how to love their own children all over again and thank the Lord for the women that's coming up in this truth. And they're teaching our young daughters of Sarah something different. But keep on reading. To be discreet. All right. These women don't know how to be discreet. They loud as hell. You'll see tonight they're going to come on here. Come on. Chase. Chase meaning to be virgins, how to keep themselves, how not to be giving it to, to little Tyrone or little uh, Shay Shay and uh, Malik. They're not teaching them that. they learning the opposite. Come on. Keepers at home. And teach them how to be keepers at home and not out in the street and in the clubs all the damn time. That's a big job for the black woman right there. You know, she shouldn't even have time to be even trying to get in the pulpit to try to teach a man anything. She got uh she all this to try to teach our own the daughters. Come on, read. Good. That it? Was that it? Oh, son of God, you're breaking up, sir. Son of God, you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good obedient to their own husbands all right and teach them how to be obedient to their own husband and not the damn pastor all right so yes going back to answer your question brother et uh yes we 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 do um we allow women to teach but they must be teaching the women and the children all right not you serving authority over the man saying that she's the bishop or she's the so, head pastor so can i say something though Sure, go ahead. Okay, so I, I just want to give some commentary because I, I know this is a debatable topic. And uh, me being a pastor, uh, I, I understand how debatable it is. So my thing is this. If a woman cannot teach a man, uh, then how can a woman be a doctor, a professor, a high school teacher? If Paul is restricting the woman in the church to have authority of a man, th that then would mean that a woman cannot be elected to political office. She should not be a manager in the store. She cannot be a principal. I think what we have to understand when Paul said this, we have to reason with when he opened this letter, he was talking to Timothy, giving him some public instructions about Timothy and how he should be in Ephesus. What Paul was really doing was he was really giving some, uh, uh, really a lot of ambiguities in this text. When you talk about women learning in silence, because if you take it literal, what Paul really was saying was women was disrupting public worship because they were not learned and their husbands were out working. So what Paul was really saying was that they should be in silence. But when he talked about women not being able to have authority over man, I don't I don't really believe Paul really was saying that because if you go back to the Garden of Eden, Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. And if it's hard to follow the logic that women should not have authority of man, if Adam was was not deceived, then he sinned deliberately out of rebellion or ignorance. So it's hard for me to take that a woman cannot have authority over a man if we don't see it from more than just right. one perspective. So, so what you're saying, you don't, as a pastor, you don't believe in Paul writing. You think it's hard to believe 
what Paul said right there. That's no, 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 no. I, what I'm saying is he did not allow what I'm saying is it, Paul's policy is clear, but it did not allow women to teach in the first century church in Ephesus. However, oh. I don't believe that Paul, hey. I don't believe that Paul, that writing of Paul was to restrict because you got Deborah, who was a prophetess. You got, you know, she was the wife of Lepidotho and, and she was judging Israel at the time. So, so there's too many contextual scriptures to be able to talk about if Paul really was truthful in what he's, and I'm not saying Paul, I'm not, and, and I want to, I want to say this clearly before I yield my mic. I'm not saying I don't believe in Paul's teaching, but I think it's deeper than what we're reading. That's what I'm getting to. I think women, uh, God has raised women in a time where men have fallen and have not done what God has asked them to do in some aspect. So, and I do believe that when God has raised women in such a time to be able to have that authority because of what he's called us to do. Now, that's just what I believe. Now, I'm just telling you what I believe. I don't want to debate with you, but I'm just giving you my own belief. Hey, hey, hey. Appreciate you. Uh, hey, we appreciate you, E.T. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you said that in a very respectful way. Hey, we want to stay on this stage and want you to get an earful of the word of God tonight because... Um, what it sounds like is that you you're you're putting your own twist on what we just read, and um and we're gonna go into Deborah, we're gonna go into all of the prophetess, and let's see if they were um against the you, men you or, usurping or, authority, uh, usurping authority. Oh well, yeah, God. yeah, were they usurping authority over the men? All right, and Deborah was. Well, let's get you want to get that right quick. You uh go ahead, ZB real, go ahead. Um yeah yeah so um. Go go to that in Deborah because a lot of the things that uh, you mentioned, E.T., um, were things of the world, and there and we all know that there are spiritual aspects to everything that is conducted, every action that we have in the world. So for those things that you mentioned, judges, political office, all of those things. Um, those are things of the world. And I understand. Uh, and, I was just, I was just trying to give some context because well, if you look well, at, me, if you look at the myself, yeah, 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 go ahead, man. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, because what, what happens is when man set those things up and those things were not governed by the rules or laws of God. And therefore, if they were governed by the rules and laws of God, women would not be in those positions to be an authority over a man. So going back to what Paul said, it covers all of those things because when women have that option or that um, choice of being in a position of power, it destroys all mankind. As you mentioned, going back to the book of Genesis with Eve, she was given the choice of having the authority over the man. God never gave that to her. Adam was set up to be a God on this earth, to name the animals, to teach the people, to guide the people. And the instructions that Eve received were from Adam that we can't do this. No, and, and, her, and her divine role was to be a help meet to that man. Nowhere do you read the divine order of a woman was to um, tell him how to govern the things that God had given him to be judge, teacher, etc. Whatever you want to name, those are positions of man. Because when woman is given the choice to be in a position of power, then Satan dictates the way she operates, and it ultimately becomes not of God. Now, as you mentioned, Deborah. Now, let's go to the scripture of Deborah because a lot of people use that. Yep, we do know that it says that she was a, a judging in Israel. Why? The men were afraid. Yep, but even in their fear, look at Deborah's demeanor where she did not go against what Paul is speaking about in the New Testament of usurping authority. Go to Deborah and how she, her mentality was as she was called by God to do the things that she was doing. Yes, sir. The book of Judges, chapter 5 and verse 9. My heart is toward the governors of Israel. 
a lot of people skip over that. You like to read how the boy was telling the man what to do because she was giving the word from God to give them inspiration to go do what they needed to do because they were fearful in what they were supposed to do, which was to go to war. And after all of that, when she was speaking the words of God, she made sure that she let the reader know her thoughts and her intentions. Read that again for me. My heart is toward the governors of Israel. That means what? That means that she was in full agreement and in compliance in what the men were doing. She did not say, I have to step out here and do this because y'all niggas is weak. <laughs> she was in full agreement with them winning the war and doing what God said. I'm in full compliance with them. Keep reading. That offered themselves willingly among the people. That offered themselves willingly. The board didn't go to war. The, the board wasn't on the front line. She wasn't leading the man into charge. She was giving them a word of confidence that God had given her, the man, to do what they were supposed to do. Lead the nation. Never was she in front controlling or leading anything. That's what the Christian church do. They take the, the, the history of Deborah and act as if she was the, um, if she was a um, she-man, warrior, goddess, princess, and she was leading the man into battle. That was not it at all. Keep reading. Verse 10. Speak ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. They that are delivered from the noise of archers and the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abnawam. Who was leading? The man. It was not Deborah. She wasn't leading nothing. She was encouraging the man to do what God had called them to do. Lead the people. So y'all got to stop using Deborah as a, as a foundation of women can lead men and do what they do. That's never been the divine order of God. You won't find no woman of God in the Bible out there leading man in the front of the battle, usurping authority over them. They knew their role, which was so, in hindsight, what is Deborah actually doing? She is actually being a help meet to the man that she was created to serve. Can I ask you a question? In this, in this aspect, it was in the, in the being a help meet as encouraging them to go to battle. Never did she take authority and step out in front of them and say, Make me a god like they are. So if you step help me, you step at the Judges chapter four though, verses four through five. She became between Rama and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. Watch this now. The Bible said that, she, that Israel came up to her for judgment. She had political authority, and the people respected her decisions. I'm that, not. And, and, that. and that I just said that. I just said she would speak that God was speaking through her because the man was fearful to go to war, and she confirmed it in Judges chapter five that I'm I'm full support of what God has told the man to do. So Lead do you believe the, that man the man was into incompetent? Captivity. So do you believe huh? that God used her because the man was incompetent or unwilling, and she had an authoritative power from God Did to you? do that? If you read the book of Judges, you see that they were in fear of the of the king. And God used a woman, right? That's what I just said. She's a help meet. She okay. was a help meet. I just literally said it. She's a help meet in the in the um But she was a judge situation. though. Listen to what I'm saying. She was a help meet in the situation of war. Never did she usurp authority. And say, and, and say, I'm going to lead the battle. That's what the equivalent of what we're saying is you got women leading the church. And I've been called to God by God to lead men back to God. You don't read that about the board. Show me where you read that. Her authority. Read of, uh, I know. But what I'm saying is her authority as a judge, though. 
it pointed the people back because not only was she a judge, she was a civil judge. She was a spokesperson for God. She was a worship leader for the people. And so I believe that by reading that, it was well, not first off, her. Wrong. First off, you're wrong. She wasn't a worship leader. The only she was a worship leader. Worship Listen, the only people that could be worship leaders were Levites. No, but she was a worship leader, though. Go read the text. <laughs> the only people that could be worship leaders were Levites. Was so you're she saying she wasn't the worship leader? Man? Was she encouraging the man to go fight the war that God had told them to fight? Yep. But was she a worship leader telling them to bring a sacrifice here, bring a sacrifice there, sprinkle the blood seven times around the altar, pour out the blood right here? You don't read that at all. Okay. You just made that up. The sure. only worship leaders of the Old Testament were the Levites. Okay. That that's that's historical accuracy. So you can't and you can't uh what you what you Christian pastors say, uh eisegete or exegete, I don't know which one it is. It's a it, made it, up it, white it, man it, word. It's an exegete, it's exegete. Okay, you just exegeted that to make her some somebody that she's not. Okay. She was not a, 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 a Spiritually, that's the Levite's job in the Old Covenant. And God killed people for trying to do what the Levites were supposed to do. You can't put that on the board. She literally said in chapter 5, I am in full support of what God is telling the man to do. Go out and fight. And she was used as a help meet to encourage the man to do what God had ordained them to do. Lead the people. Okay. Never was she in the forefront of the battle. But today, you've got women that use the Bora, women pastors use the Bora. Oh, she was the leader. She was the this. She was never on, on the pulpit leading the congregation. She was never telling men how to be men and all of that other shit that women do now. There ain't <laughs> no woman on earth that's a pastor that can raise a man or, or spiritually raise a man to be what God or Jesus had called them. And, and let me, I'll give you the mic back, but let me pull this scripture here. Okay, go and I'm going to ask you one more question before I, before I get off yes. here tonight. Can you clarify okay. for me? If you're saying well, Wait a minute, that, let me, hold, okay, hold on a question before you make me forget. Before you make me okay. forget. Now, um, go to that in 2 Timothy. Now, don't, don't forget your question, uh, Brother E.T. 2 Timothy chapter 1, and I want you to read verse 3. The book of Second Timothy, chapter one and verse three. I thank God, whom I no, serve. No, no. Uh, Second Timothy, chapter two, verse three. Oh yes, sir. The book of Second Timothy, chapter two and verse three. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. There ain't no woman on earth that can teach a man how to be a soldier of Jesus Christ. Why? Because God never ordained a woman to go to battle. That's not her job. Here's and here's the proof of it. Numbers, Numbers chapter 27, here's how you know Deborah was not going out of her divine order. She was being a help meet to the man in the act of war because the spirit of fear had fell upon them. Numbers chapter 27, and I want you to read verse 15 down to 17. Yes, sir. And we know God is not a man that he should lie, and neither will he change. Numbers uh, read that, 27. The book of Numbers, chapter 27 and verse 15. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Now, for, for God to set Deborah over the congregation, that will make him a liar. Keep reading. Which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may... And, and them in and out before them in what in war spiritual war physical war that may go out and in before them go ahead and which may lead them out and which may bring them in that the congregation of the lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd now no way the boy would be able to usurp the word of god which god gave to moses because read the next verse and see if god said no I've got a woman in store named Deborah coming in a thousand years. Read the next verse. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take the Joshua, the son. Stop. Stop. God said, I agree with that, Moses. 
take Joshua. He didn't say take take another. He didn't say take uh, a cousin of Moses. He didn't say take a Minadab daughters. He didn't say that. God said, "You're exactly right." Set a man up over the congregation to lead them out and to lead them in. So there's no way Deborah would be usurping the word of God that was ordained in Numbers chapter 27 and becoming something that she was not supposed to be. She was a help meet in the aspect of war because the man was fearful and she, she confirmed it. I am in complete agreement with what the man of the Lord are supposed to do. Now, go ahead, E.T., if you got something or uh, scriptures that would usurp God setting man over the congregation. Yep, I got one verse, and I just want you to explain this to me since, you know, you have your perspective. I want you to explain this one. Go to Galatians 3.28. Oh, there gosh. Is, there is neither <laughs> right, Jew hold on, hold on. nor Greek. We got to no, read it. Hold on. Uh, hold on e. Okay, 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 uh, okay. I got you. Uh, uh, the brother Caleb is like, he's like the all-time quarterback. Uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Back football, so he reads gotcha. to all of us. Okay, uh, numbers three twenty-eight for the brother Et. No, 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 no. Galatians three twenty. No, Galatians. Okay, Galatians. 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 Yep. Go ahead, for the yes, sir. The book, the book of Galatians, chapter three and verse twenty-eight. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay, so if you're saying that a man, a woman cannot have that authority to carry the gospel over man. I want you to tell me what is what, what is he saying here to the church in Galatia? What is Paul saying here? Hello? ZB, yeah? You got it, ZB? That's silence. Oh, man, silent. my bad. My bad, my bad, man. Hey, uh, pissy shower, shut up before we throw you off the stage. Uh, now, let's see what he's talking about here. Um, go to Galatians chapter 3, and let's just um, let's just read up a little bit, because um, I know that our brothers and sisters that are modern-day Christians, we like to, we isolate scriptures a lot of the times, uh, just like we did John 3.16. And we and, and and we take scriptures out of context when we are speaking about them to confirm our matter. So um, they isogene, they isogene. Yeah, they isogene. I think that's what it's called. Uh, Numbers chapter, I mean uh, Galatians chapter three, and uh, let's read verse twenty-three um, down to verse twenty-eight because um, historically speaking, we know that this is a letter of Paul. So the verses were added later for um man's coding right but this is one long letter so start up higher in the letter and read down to get the context of verse 28 let's read it and then i'll give you the precepts of what he's talking about because we all know that the paul was a master of the law and he drew from the law that he believed in so let's read that for him the book of galatians chapter 3 and verse 23 but before faith came we were kept under the law. We were kept under the law. So the context of this uh, conversation that he's speaking about is about the law of God. We were kept under the law. Meaning what? Sacrifice. Keep reading. It's going to explain that itself too. Go ahead. Shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Because Christ was the ultimate schoolmaster, right? He's the sacrifice of God, the Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb of God that shall take away the sins of the world. That's what John said. Read on. That we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So the faith that we are to have is in Christ. We are no longer under that schoolmaster, meaning sacrifice. Keep reading. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Ye are all the children of God. Who, who is he referring to? It's the same people in verse 23 that were kept under the law. We all know who that was. That was the Israelites in the Old Testament. He's speaking to Israelites in Galatia that lived in the city of Galatia that we are all, what did he say again? 
For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. If you have faith, you are all the children of God because God will disown you if you do not do what he says. He will disown you and you will become the child of the devil. Keep reading. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now, we're understanding that from verse 23 on down, he's been talking about the law of sacrifice being done away with and now the faith in Christ to be kept. Keep reading. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all for, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. What is he speaking of in verse uh, 28? We're reading about a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy. Uh, Jew, no Greek, uh, bond or free, which is servant or free, freeborn like Paul was. Uh, there is neither male nor female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. What is he literally saying? Peter answered that in 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, and let's read verse 7. The book of 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Because I'm, I'm speaking about what you spoke about, Brother E.T., where you said neither male nor female. So I'm dealing with that, but, uh, that particular point in Galatians chapter 3 verse 28, where it says it's neither male nor female. Read that again in 1 Peter 3 and 7. Yes, sir. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Uh-huh. Because what? The woman, is, the woman is what? The weaker vessel. As you read in Timothy, it said Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived. Adam willingly followed his wife. Eve really thought that Satan could give her the power to be as powerful as her husband. She was literally deceived, the weaker vessel. Keep reading. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So when he's saying about neither male nor female, he's speaking about when it comes to salvation in Christ, whether you're man or woman, you're all one when it comes to Christ. The same way that we have, uh, uh, that the man has access to eternal life and salvation through Jesus Christ is the same exact way that the woman has access to eternal life through Jesus Christ. Here's, and we're going to keep reading because it's going to say it. Keep reading. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil. Or railing, or railing for railing, but contrawise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Both of us are called, whether you male or female, we are all called in Christ Jesus to have access to what? Eternal life. Whether you are Jew, raised as a Jew, Southern Kingdom, or whether you're raised as a Greek, Living under Greek customs, you still have the uh, ac the uh, access to Jesus Christ to repent. Whether you're a slave or servant or you were freeborn like Paul, Christ died for all 12 tribes of Israel. Whether you're male, female, servant or free, whether you were raised as a Jew or you were raised as a Greek, as an Israelite living in Greek cities, you have access to Jesus Christ. That's not talking about um, there's no hierarchy in the in the kingdom of God. Not talking about that at all. How do we know that? Because Paul in his in his letters, First Corinthians chapter eleven, he lets you know that what that in Galatians three is not talking about women got the same power as men. First Corinthians eleven verse three, and then I'll mute my mic. The book of First Corinthians chapter eleven and verse three. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of the leader of every man is Christ. That's hierarchy. Go ahead. 
and the head of the woman is the man. The leader of the woman is the man. Keep reading. And the head of Christ is God. That's the hierarchy. That's Paul's letters. So no way in Galatians 3 he's saying that you all equal as far as coming to power. And it don't matter who lead what. He just gave you the divine order of God. It's God, Christ, man, women, and then children fall up under that. Because they're servants to their parents. So Galatians 3.28 ain't talking about we can all uh, uh, be called a God and lead churches even if I'm a woman. That's not talking about that at all. You, that Galatians 3.28 means you all got access now that Christ did away with animal sacrifice. You're no longer under that schoolmaster, but you have to be, believe in the faith in Jesus the Christ. Now you got access to eternal life and inherit a blessing, which is the kingdom of God. Not talking about what you Christians say at all. I hope it ain't too deep for some of y'all, but hey, marinate on it. The Lord will give you the understanding. Go back and listen to it. Uh, so I mean, my mic brother, uh, ET, if you wanted the rebuttal or whatever, you can go ahead. That was excellent. I can't believe that scripture was used. Wow. Brother, well, you, know, we, we, you know, you know, we be waiting on that Galatians 3. <laughs> we be waiting. I know. I've never, I've never heard it used that way. I've never heard it used as an opportunity or a, a I don't know, as, as a gateway for, for women to lead the church. I've never heard it brought out like that. That's wow. Hey, all, all praises for Clubhouse, though. So, you know. Well, it, it, I, I understand the direction you were taking, but I, I, I don't believe that's, that's the position where it dealt with inequality. I think it's more so dealing with the fact that there's unity and solidarity in the Christian body that God can use from everyone. If we restrict God to being restricted by, you can't do this, you you that, then we have to look at, you know, I, I can go in, in many directions, you know, Lois and Eunice. Hey, E.T., e I agree with that, that God can use anybody because God can use a woman to share the knowledge of God that he revealed to her to call a man. Right. But that would make God that would make God a liar to now use that woman that he showed his wisdom and knowledge to to call that man to now be over that man and lead him in the way of knowledge and truth. That would make God a liar and we know that God is not a man that he should lie. Cuz Paul's mentioned no you can't use separate over a man. So for God to call that woman and then tell her, give her a divine inspiration, I want you to lead man and teach them how to be man, although you're a woman and don't know what the hell it's like to be a man, I want you to do it. That would make God a liar. That makes that makes no biblical sense in the in the uh spirituality of God. It makes sense to man in a democratic society where women have equal rights but in the bible under the law of god that would make him a liar to have a woman leading soldiers of christ in a war that she's never going to fight in that's a woman king <laughs> <laughs> that's woman king right Go ahead, and, that's not, and i was just going to say this too that's not a restriction that's divine order that's the way god set it up because I heard okay, the brother well, mention, I heard the brother mention that you know if we start to restrict God and to put God into basically like into a box, saying that He can only do this or He can only do that. That's that that's that's not the case. We're dealing with the divine order. The God is not going to break His divine order. Like the brother said, ZB real. Will He use women at times um, to spark the spirit in a man for him to be able to see? For instance, you have women that come into the church before their husbands, right? Go to 1 Corinthians 7 real quick. Just just, a, just, just a, a showing how uh, a, a, a woman can be used to spark a man's interest in the most high. And then once that man is, that, that's, that interest is sparked and that spirit is fed, then the man is going to usurp authority over his wife. We just read that, right? In, in 1 Corinthians 3, I mean, excuse me, 1 Peter 3, Pete, ZB Real, you just read that about how the woman is the weaker vessel. Go ahead, man. So, elaborate on 
You know, the, so, wisdom is double to that which is known. Right. So you can't break that. If if the Lord says that the woman is the weaker vessel and that her husband is, is she supposed to ask her husband at home? You may say, well, what if she came into the church and came into the knowledge of Christ before her husband? Does that now uh, mess up God's divine order of what he has written? No, it doesn't. But what it does do is show that the Lord can use anyone to spark your interest in him or to, 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 to rouse up that spirit in you towards the Lord. But then once the Lord has done that, that spirit is fed, the man is going to take his rightful position as being a leader. I'm going to show you that. First Corinthians chapter 7, the unbelieving husband. Um, read verse 14. Yes, sir. The book of First Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. So we read right here, it says the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. What does it mean the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife? Go back to First Peter real quick. Let's read 3 and 1. The book of First Peter, chapter 3 and verse 1. Likewise, ye wives... Be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. That's it right there. He may, even though he don't obey the word, he's unbelieving. It said he may be won by the conversation of the wives, meaning this sister got wisdom. The spirit of Christ is in her. She got the Holy Ghost. And she know how to deal with her husband. She know how to talk to that man. She know how to respect that man. He may not believe what she believe in terms of the scriptures at first, but because he loves her, she's able to sanctify him. You understand what I mean? And she's able to be, he's able to be, um, uh, he's able to see her as an example and he's able to grow from that. Now, once he, once his wife has, 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 has shown him that righteous example, and he says, you know what, I, I, I'll keep the Sabbath. I, you know, I won't eat pork. You know, I, I'll respect, I, I'll wear the beard. He starts to keep God's commandments because he's pleased to dwell. Eventually, that spirit in him is going to start to evolve. And he's going to start to take the, the scriptures for himself and say, you know what, let me start to really study these things and grow in the spirit of God. And then you'll see you know, the husband come in and he'll be up under other men and then that spirit will be developed and you'll watch him grow and take his rightful place. You understand? That's that's what the scripture is talking about. So we're not saying by any means that the Lord won't use a woman to rouse up the spirit in her husband. But what we are saying, once that man starts to keep the commandments and starts to get himself right with God, he got to take his rightful place as the leader. Going back to chapter uh, three and verse uh, seven again. Read that for me. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, and verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So what's up with this man? This man was once, verse 1. Now this man is verse 7. He taking the, he taking the what they say, the bull by the horns. He done, he done, he done taking control of his household. He's running it according to the word of God. Now that woman that once sparked his interest in God, now she is in subjection to her husband. Like the scripture said, that's the transformation you're seeing from verse one all the way down to verse seven. But I want to go back up to verse four real quick because um, it talked about in verse one, how that he may be won by her conversation, meaning she has a righteous conversation. She, she has righteous conduct towards the Lord. Uh, skip back up to verse four. Watch what it says he's supposed to see in her. Come on. Verse 4, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. I wanted to read that because oftentimes in the Christian church, when you find a woman that's quote unquote holy and sanctified and led by the Holy Ghost, she real mean. Like she's real authoritative. She want to rule over her husband. But we read right here in the scriptures where the apostle Peter, who was the head of the church after Christ died, he's given instruction for that woman to be meek and quiet. Not demeaning, not arrogant, not disrespectful to her Lord. He not says why she's need to bite them. Right. Not why I need to bite them. None of that. No, 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 no. 
because once that man gets because once that man gets right with God and takes his rightful place, she is now being she's now back in that position as being the weaker vessel, which she was never uh, stronger than him in the sense of, of of a man and a woman. She was just the one that the Lord called first or that the Lord showed his showed himself unto first. Once her husband get in line with that, she got to fall right in line to verse seven on down. And the husband got to deal with her as the weaker vessel, give her honor. You understand? And, and of course, respect his wife. But the Lord never gave license for the woman to lead the church. Never. Hey, hey, Dion, you know, a good example of that is um, is, is way back in Genesis when when God first started out creating um, his people in um, in the book of Genesis. Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, but he only revealed to uh, Rebecca the blessing on the sons. Absolutely. Was now was was uh, Isaac not in authority just because God revealed something to her? Nope, not at all. He was still in authority. Uh, and, and what happened in the process of time, Isaac came to understand that these sons that I have, Jacob is blessed. <laughs> That's why what happened with when um, he blessed them before his death and Esau said, you ain't got no blessing for me, Lord. I mean, for me, father, he didn't say, you know what? I take back everything that I did for Jacob and I give it to you. Isaac didn't do that. He said, hey. It's of the Lord what just happened. I realize that now. <laughs> so 100%. just because just because it's revealed to a woman don't mean she now usurps authority over the man at all. That's way back in Genesis from the get go. I mean my mic. Hey, one more, one more. Romans sixteen and one. Watch this. So the apostle Paul, we know what nobody on his level in understanding. I mean, this brother wisdom was he learned from Christ himself. I think we all can agree with that. And watch him give honor to the sisters that was in the church, but never, they never overstepped their bounds, nor did they ever try to usurp, usurp authority over him. They had respect for Paul. Watch what he mentions. Go to, go to Romans 16 and one. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 16 and verse one. I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sincrea, mm -hmm. that ye receive her in the Lord as become his saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. Damn. For, for she hath been a succor of many and of myself also. Now watch this. So in the church, and you got this going on today amongst us, there are sisters that have a, a excellent, spirit towards the Lord. Would I would y'all agree with that, brothers? Do y'all know some sisters that got some excellent spirits toward the Lord? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there are sisters amongst us that we love and that have excellent spirits towards us. And they respect us as the leadership, as the men of the congregation that the Lord called to guide the congregation. But some of these sisters have expertise and things that I could not even imagine, that I have no understanding of. And they take the lead on that. Now, they're respectful in how they deliver the counsel. They're respectful in how they show us what it is that needs to be done. And we don't have a problem with that. We know that the Lord calls sisters into the body to help us improve the body. There are places women can go that men can't go. There are things that women can get done that us, unfortunately, as black men, because of how we've been perceived in this society, some of our sisters have a leg up. Some of our sisters are in real estate. Some of our sisters are in banking. Some of our sisters are in nursing, doctors, lawyers. Some of these sisters we have to lean on and, legis and, and, and when it comes to legislature, understanding laws and things in the city, city codes. We got sisters amongst us that's electricians, carpentry. You understand, they have some of these, the, you know, uh, we got a sister that I know that's an inspector. She can go in a house and tell you everything that's wrong with the house. I mean, she can get up in the roof. She can check the foundation. Sister bad, you understand? Like all praises to the most high. She very detailed, very respectful with it. So there are sisters amongst us. Notice what he said about Phoebe. He said that you receive her in the Lord as become of saints and that she assist her in whatsoever business she have need of you, for she have been a succorer, I mean a comforter, 
of many and of myself also. Paul said, look, help that sister out. Whatever she need, y'all brothers help her out with it. Why? Because of the talent and the gift the Lord gave her, and none of y'all have that ability. So deal with that sister. But she not leading the congregation. She not disrespecting the men. Matter of fact, this is the same thing that Deborah said when it said my heart, she said my heart is to the governors of Israel, meaning I'm not meant to lead the men. I'm only here to help the men. Okay, uh, can you read? Verse three, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Skip down to verse real quick. Skip down to verse uh, seven. This is what I want. So greet six and seven, six and seven. Yes, sir. Verse six, greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Adronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Look at that. Look at that. These people knew Christ before Paul. So he had under, he had enough wisdom to say, you never disrespect the people that Christ called, that the Lord called before you. So although his position was much higher than theirs, and the Lord was using him to do even more mighty works and to establish churches all throughout Asia Minor and, and, and so on and so forth, he still had enough respect because he knew that these people were vital to the ministry. And that's what we... We understand the same thing. But if a woman's going to come into the congregation and think she's going to sit up at the leadership table and tell and bark out orders and tell the men what they're going to do and what they're not going to do and all that, hell no. Then she's going she to see the lions. Then we're going to bring the lions out. You understand? Because that's not her place. So I hope that's understandable. I hope you brothers and your sisters can digest that. But that's the Bible. That's right. E.T., you you uh you wanted to say anything in your closing closing arguments? Brother, I yield, man. I yield. I yield my mic. Uh, you guys, uh, we have different perspectives, and I respected it. You know, one thing I do honor about this room is you guys are respectful in your position and your perspective, and I really appreciate that. I just believe that as, as many things in the Word of God <clears> – <throat> Uh, I, I believe at the end of the day that uh, God can use whomever he desires. And I believe that there are many women pastors who are leading effective congregations. Uh, and I believe that, that, that the anointing of God is on their life. That's just what I believe personally. Uh, hey, just because uh, I, me, E.T., I want to ask you a question. Are, are you sure. married by any chance? I am married. Yes, sir. Uh, so, so I just, I just want to, get the perspective of man to man here uh if sure. you go you go to counseling and your past your pastor is a woman um you, you're in your mind in your spirit as a man that you are seeking guidance in counseling on your marriage and how to lead from a from a woman well, no. If I go to counseling, I would be going to counseling with a, a man and a woman. Just as my wife and I, when we counsel people in our ministry, we counsel together because there is perspective that she's going to give to the woman and there's perspective I'm going to give to the woman. And also there's a perspective that I'm going to give to, to to the man. And so we do we do it together. And I think uh, I think it's imperative to know that if you're a, you're a pastor, you know, I suggest that a pastor is married because of these type situations where you have this situation where there could be a counseling or whatever. And I suggest that both come with the man and the woman so that you can get both perspective. My wife is not a pastor of the ministry. She serves okay. under the ministry. She serves as a minister of the gospel. She's not a pastor in our ministry. She serves as a leader in the ministry, but she's not the pastor. I'm the pastor of the church. And there's no, there's no, there's no fight in that. Um, she knows her position, and I know mine. But I, I, her position is so important, though, to the ministry in the fact that uh, it's a, it, it's important to the ministry. I just so, so let me. I want to ask you. So in your in your counseling with you and your wife, has your wife ever told the man what he can do better to please his wife? 
She has. She shared some perspectives oh, on. Godly, man. <laughs> do you find something wrong with the? Wait a minute. I, wait a minute. I, I, do, I do because now, okay. Tell me why you. Tell she, me why you what, find something wrong with it though. What has she just done? She just usurped authority over the man. She has now by giving him man, wisdom. She has now told her man. How, told a man how to be subservient. Wait a minute to now. But you just said Deborah. Happy. You just said earlier. That the board gave the men because they did not know and they were not willing to come that's forward. True. She gave them she gave them advice. So how yeah, could a woman were, sitting they, in counsel? That's not, because they that's because they were afraid. Are you afraid to give counsel without your wife? No, it's not. It's, it's really about, it's not about afraid. It's about well, accountability. She don't, she don't need to be there then. She don't, she don't need to be there. But it's but accountability though. So so let me ask you a question. It's just from a just from a you know the Bible talks about don't let your good be even spoken of Luke twelve. So my thing is, if you are a man, is it safe for a man to counsel a female by himself when he has a wife? It Let's just see. with the protection, and it's also for the well, sake and the well, wisdom. Well, well, then let's 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 go back to the scriptures in Numbers twenty-seven. God says, "Set a man over the congregation." Okay. Now, with with that being said, if he set over the congregation, who's he counseling? He's counseling whomever he needs to counsel, woman or man, whoever is go. in need of it. Right. There, there you go. A, a married man can counsel uh, in, uh, a, a woman, a, a man, married couple. That's his job as the man over the congregation. Right. Never do you read that a woman was to give counsel with a man and then tell the man how he can be a better husband to his wife. Man, so that shit, get... boy, I tell you, I tell you what, I wish a woman would tell me what the, how to be a man in my house. <laughs> shit, it's going to be the fun of your move. I'm like, who the, uh, let me get a scripture. Let me keep it spiritual. Say this, uh, first Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter nine, <laughs> first Corinthians chapter nine. And, uh, let's read verse, uh, I'll get straight to the point in a second time. Um, First, uh, verse uh, uh, three, uh, down to five. Yes, the book of First Corinthians, chapter nine, and verse three. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this: Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well? A what? A wife. Uh huh. As well as other other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas. Paul, Paul said, hey, man, we're apostles. We got power to lead a sister, whether she's single, a wife, whether she's married, because we've been set up over the congregation of the Lord by God to lead all. Never do you read about a, a woman being set up over the congregation to lead a sister, a wife, a man. That's not scriptural. That's, man, that's man's traditions to appease the feminist in the feminism in the woman that lives in America because no women and no other place on the country have a problem with being helped me to their husband and playing the background only here in America they want they don't want to be behind their man they want to be next to him so they can be seen because when you stand behind the man you can't be seen all the, that man gonna get all the glory they can't see you because you're a help meet to him in America, through feminism, women don't want to stand behind their man. They want to stand next to him and be equal. That's why women sitting up there in church counseling. Does your does your wife teach in the church? She does. Oh God, et man, God, hey, Lee, bro, come brother, on, buddy. my wife has a PhD, brother. She she does teach. I got a PhD. Hey, church, hey, hey, Kevin Samuel said that too. I got a PhD. That don't mean nothing to God. <laughs> That obedient to God, mate. <laughs> hey, bro, brother, listen, I love y'all brothers, man. You know, we just got different perspective, man. And I respect that. You know what I mean? I, I really came hey. across this room, and I'm glad I came, man, man. We just have different perspectives, but I, I, it's good love to you all, man. Honestly. Hey, hey man. Hey, hey, feelings, uh, man. We just stick, a, stick around, man. Keep listening, man. It might be something to prick your heart in here, or maybe something 
that the Lord chooses to open your spirit of <laughs> understanding. Stick around, man. Stay on stage. You, you welcome. My wife calling me, so I got to go. <laughs> oh, shit. Come on, E.T. You troll. Damn. <laughs> Y'all brothers, y'all brothers real, man. I love y'all brothers, man. Y'all be blessed, man. Thank you for giving me the time, though, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, I want to uh, say something right quick, man. Hey, the common misconception is a, a lot of times that uh, what Christians don't understand, too, is when the even the men and the women, if they're not teaching or preaching the right doctrine. They're preaching white supremacy to the people they're preaching um christianity to the people as well why you know what what you know for them to even to bring up deborah to bring up to compare themselves to any of the prophecies in the bible uh they're not teaching the laws of god they're teaching the laws of god are done away with they're not teaching their nationality they're not teaching nothing that they're supposed to be teaching uh according to god but rather they're teaching uh, the traditions and the philosophies of man and that's the problem and this is why they don't understand when we say that a woman is not supposed to be teaching they'll bring up the boar well um the boar wasn't teaching uh christianity you know she wasn't teaching god's laws was done away with she was um uh, the, the sisters in the bible were teaching um and god and the young women um and not a, not a what's the word usurping authority over the man so that's the that's the common misconception they don't understand uh yes can i ask a question i want to make a comment to what one of the um post members said he uh, said um well well wait a minute uh uh pissy shower uh you you down in the queue if you look up at the screen i think uh jarvis kelly is uh the next person that's up he's before you uh yeah, but if, if he if he ain't there you know we're gonna we'll definitely get down to you refresh your screen though let's see yeah, yeah, you out, you after Garvis. So if Garvis don't say that, and Garvis Kelly, are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. It's pronounced Jarvis. Oh, Jarvis. Okay, my bad, man. My bad. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, brother Jarvis, what you think about uh the title? All women pastors must be counseled in 2023. What's your thoughts on on that? I I totally believe that. Um, I'm I'm actually going through some trials and tribulations at this very moment um so uh, i don't know if y'all familiar with the the lady pastor from the uh the movies uh war room and uh um courageous uh are you familiar with those titles uh movies say, say it again what, what's the title there's, of there's, there's there's movies called uh war room courageous um overcomer um nah i, I ain't never heard of those sound like some uh lifetime uh low budget movies for real brother <laughs> but yeah th let me let me uh get the name of this lady pastor that my wife is always listening to she's she's just you know always listening to but what's the what's the name of that lady Pastor that you're always listening to. Priscilla? What's her last name? Sarah. A name uh are y'all familiar familiar with a lady named Priscilla? Nah, I I only Priscilla I know is uh, in the Bible, so I ain't never heard of a woman pastor named Priscilla. Not myself. Any of y'all the brothers heard somebody named Priscilla? No sir. Wow. Mm. So that 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 speaks, you know, to me even more. If you if you feel what I'm saying. Um, you know, so I'm I'm just dealing with a woman that's always challenging me. You know, she's everything I say, she challenges me. And, so and that's your that's your you talking about you speaking on your wife that's in the other room, always challenging you. Yes. The one, the well, one you see in the picture, but do, um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this: Do do both y'all do y'all have the same beliefs? Because a lot of times, um, 
<laughs> a lot of times we get together um, in this world based on fleshly and lustly desires uh, of the mm-hmm. eyes. Physically, she looks attractive to me. She's she's got what I want, uh, body wise, uh, behind wise, because she wore pants and I was able to see it, cleavage. Or she might got money. She might got some right. benefits. But, but let me let me so, let me stop you. Let me stop you there. I, I've known I've known her my whole life. Okay, like, so like, but since but I was a child, that goes like, back to the well, that go back to the question though. You might have known your whole life. Do y'all have the same beliefs in in y'all relationship? That I mean, you can uh, know whoever the whole life. She might be a Muslim. You might be a damn Catholic. Uh, what do y'all What do y'all believe in? Cause for you to say she I mean, always challenging you. We both believe in God, and and it's just that I don't I don't think she has a a complete understanding uh, because you know her, her side of the family comes from uh, you know the the religion of Christianity where they celebrate Easter and all this stuff. Where I don't really you know agree with that stuff. Well, well, then that, that's what that's what I'm saying. Then Jarvis, y'all don't have the same beliefs. No, I I, I think we do. What I'm saying is, I feel like she's being you can't. misled. You she's can't, Jarvis, but Jarvis, but Jarvis, let me bring you to reality. You can't have the same beliefs. Now, I'm gonna tell you this right now, brother. Just because somebody say I believe in God, it don't mean they believe in the same God you talking about. Cause the there is a God of this world. That had that controls all the evil. Mm-hmm. But I'm aware. Let, let's get that. Let's get that in the scriptures real quick. Yeah, I'm, I'm very aware. In, in Corinthians, let's just so just in case the other the other people might not know, let's get that in Corinthians. Yes, sir. My, the book. my Corinthians I fell out. Damn. Go ahead. <laughs> the book of Second Corinthians, chapter four, and verse three. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. So now that goes back to what I was saying, Jarvis. Just because you say I believe in God, that don't mean you necessarily believe in the same God. You might believe in the God that has blinded you to the gospel of Jesus Christ because you don't read about no Easter in the Bible. You don't read about the stuff that is practicing Christianity, uh, first day of uh, uh, worship of God, the first day of the week, um, pastor appreciation, women being pastors over the church, leading in authority. Those things are not biblical. Right. So, so, so now you have to ask her who's the God that, is, that has set those things up and have them in motion. That's the, that's not the God. That's the God of this world, which is Satan. So, right. so that's 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 all I'm saying. Is like it's like she's come. She comes from that background from her parents, and you know, and so on and so on. Which I do too. But what I'm saying is, I realized it from a young age that none of this stuff that you know goes on in the Christianity world don't seem right. Like, just don't even seem natural. So, um. Like I just really just been on my own spiritually, you know. Well, I um, I tell you right uh, from from somebody that's um, been awakened by God uh, a few years back. Um, for you to even have that knowledge and understanding that the things that you see visually in the Christian church ain't right, that is God dealing with you on a certain level, trying to get you to open your spiritual eyes to come up out of that stuff. And I, it, the woman in the picture with you, is she your wife or is she a girlfriend? No, yeah, we, we've been married two years, uh, this coming okay. on the 15th. Now, I, I'll say this. Um, God may be calling you to open your spiritual eyes so that you can learn what you need to learn. And then you can teach her to, and then you will see if you two were brought together by the God of this world or the God of the Bible. 
Because if you learn what you're supposed to learn, where she always got something to say, well, you got scriptures to show her where she's supposed to, how she's supposed to be as a woman of God, how he says in the Bible, what you're supposed to do, your role as a man, her role as a woman, and then you will know if she follows the God of this world or if she follows the God of the Bible and you may not have been ordained by the God of this Bible, but the God of this world put you all together to keep you trapped in sin and stressed out. Because it sounds to me, brother, I'm gonna tell you real talk. It yes, sounds like you stressed. It sounds like you stressed the hell out with this woman who always got some shit to say <laughs> about what you think. <laughs> Just hearing it in your voice, it sounds like you stressed the hell out. Like, hey man, y'all got something to tell me to make her ass shut up. <laughs> the only thing, the only thing I can tell you, brother, is that you begin to study to show yourself approved to God. Uh, you you begin to keep the commandments of God, and then He will impart His wisdom upon you, so that you can lead your house as it's supposed to be led. And then you have to make a decision. If she ain't willing to follow you according to thus saith the Lord of this Bible, if she wants to follow the God of this world, you now have a decision to make of, am I going to stay with her based on what I think God did, which is the lust of the flesh, because I didn't know what I know now. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going to stay with her based on, or if she's going to get herself together and then y'all two are going to be one flesh, she just needed you to get where you needed to get spiritually so you can teach her and she can be that woman of God she's supposed to be. That's going to come with you taking the first step of studying to show yourself approved first. There ain't no magic scripture I can give you, brother, to make a, a, a loud mouth feminist Christian woman to be quiet. You got to get yourself together first, mm -hmm. learn what you need to learn, and then set your house in order as God ordained you to do. Thank you, brother. No problem at all. Now, and and uh, the the if you want to, you can. It's a pin link at the top where you can email us, and we'll send you the beginner's booklet of what we give out free to whoever wants it. Um, you just email us, and we'll send that to you. We'll send you um, uh, links to our YouTube channel. Uh, we'll send you the times that the class starts, and then you can start following along. And Lord's will eventually. Maybe find yourself amongst the brethren where you can really get some uh, questions answered, get mentally, spiritually stimulated, and go back and set your house in order, and maybe even invite her one day. And that might be the thing that, that she sees examples of how women are supposed to act because uh, she sees it in action. Mm -hmm. And that may be the thing that, that, that you know awakens the spirit in her and she's ready to follow you like she's meant to do. Yes, sir. So, e yeah, send us the email, man. We'll get you set. We'll 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 get you pointing in the right direction. Got it, man. Appreciate it. Hey, no problem, Jarvis. No problem at all. All right, hey, uh, Pitsy Shower, you up, man? All right, yeah. Um, can somebody read Romans eight fourteen? Hey, uh, uh, Dion, y'all y'all got Pitsy Shower, man. I can't deal with this dude. Bruh, I can't deal with him either, man. I always be, I always want to kick him, right? He's so disrespectful. You call me Pitsy Shower, but I'm being disrespectful. Well, come on, man. You done cussed us out so many times. I just nights. got up here. I just got up here. Well, today. okay. You like, well, I didn't cuss y'all today, but I did yesterday. <laughs> come on, oh, man. So you do evil for evil? Straight, I thought you straight up. Straight up, straight up, straight up, evil. evil. You spoke do you evil, do evil, of, our, evil? of our leader. You spoke oh, evil of our leader evil too. Evil. Yeah, I can't, do I can't do it. Evil? Yeah, I, I can't do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why. Damn, Judd! I can't do Damn. it, man. Because, because <laughs> people, I'm going to tell you about people like him. People like him are the type of people that want you to go back to being the person that you turned away from. You know, um, you know, it's it's that's all he is. He's just playing the role of Satan to get us carnal. Um, you know, you got to separate from people like that. People, you know, that's the reason why, you know, I got him blocked on at least four different 
four different of his names. That's why he keep getting different names to come in here. You know, well, give me that, give me that, that scripture and um, uh, what's that? Four and fourteen. I can't think of the book. Is it Mark four and fourteen? Oh yes, I know what you want. You know what I want. All praises. So you got me first. I can't remember the scripture. Go ahead. The book of Mark, chapter four and verse fifteen. And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and take it the way the word that was sown in their hearts so we can have good nights you know even with the brothers that disagree like the brother was on here earlier um dang, he off here but i think it was et or whatever even though he disagreed with us it still was a good conversation to where you know he went to his scriptures and we was able to go back to our scriptures and whatnot and i think it was a peaceful dialogue well you know where you know it was it was held the way the scriptures say we should deal with each other you know, you know, with a lot of people that come on with disagreements, we're still able to go over the scriptures with them. And if they disagree when they leave, they still do. But, you know, with like him, Maine, you know, some of these other people that come in here, their whole job is to cause confusion and, to, um, you know, come in and come in between. Because, you know, a lot of times uh, dealing with, I'll say Christians, you know, they live under this false sense of reality that their pastor never says a bad word or never, you know, yells at somebody or something like that. So he come on there and we end up having to put him in his place. You know, we lose a lot of people because of that. And that's his job, his job. That's the reason why he keeps coming back is to, to come in and take away the word that's being sown in the hearts of the many that come on here every night. So, you know, maybe one day he'll come on and he, He'll be all right, but he just need to start his own room. Why don't he just start the, the golden swords room? Where he, you know, and, and have everybody come and listen to him. Right. I see A1 on the stage. A1, what's going on? Shalom. Shalom, shalom, mighty men of God. Hey, I shalom, came, sir. I came in the room as soon as I heard the call, but y'all booted him out. Uh, I just, I just, I just sent him an invite, A1, so there you go, he's back for you. Yes, how are you, Golden Sword? Are you, are you in good spirits this morning? Golden Sword, that, that was for, that was for you, that's A1 talking to you. Yeah, I was chilling, one of your, um, compadres just out of nowhere, and I told him to read Romans 8.14, which says, for as many that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So I was going to ask him, did the Holy Spirit lead him to call me pissy showers? Then I was going to ask him, is homosexuality legal in Israel? Because in order for you to call somebody pissy showers, you got to visualize somebody, a man, or somebody doing something vile, pissing on someone. And the Bible say cast down vain imaginations, but he's supposedly the one keeping the commandments and his excuse was talking about something that I did yesterday. It's a whole new day. I repent for my sins every day. So he's operating in the flesh, being a hypocrite, not following the commands. The Bible say if you got something against your brother, you're supposed to go to them in private. He didn't do that. I've never been into a Christian room where, where a Christian, a real Christian, like y'all say, y'all the real Israelites, will say, pissy this, pissy that. I never did that. But he's the one talking about Christians and people in the chat laughing and going along with what he did. So let me ask you a question. If, if Jesus Christ was in Golden this room, Golden would Golden Jesus Christ... Christ Golden sword, just Christ listen to me for a minute. Golden sword, answer that question, to, A. Listen, a I'm gonna, ask, answer that question, A. I'm going to answer you. You know me, I always and answer I you. I to be real, and, 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 if, and if I'm wrong, uh, and, and be real, that means you got to reprimand him. You got to reprimand him. Just hear me, just hear me. Just hear me. You got to you reprimand can't. him in front of everybody, or you are not a real leader, and you, you are talking about women. Women can't be leaders. If you don't reprimand him, in front of everybody, you're you're emotional. Emotional. we got it on audio, we got the clips and everything, and it will be going on YouTube. 
I promise Golden you, you, you never Golden come sword. here and repent it, ever. Golden never sword. Repent it. I've been you cursed know, out. Who the dude Golden says sword. that I invite you to say that to me in real life, a, in my I'm face, a, I'm, like you, a you, man in public, and I guarantee you, and I'm going to leave it at that. But go ahead. So, so, Golden Sword, I've experienced with you cursing and being belligerent with me in this room repeated what times to the point. Oh, you say I'm not the man of God. You're supposed to be the man of God leading the way, showing Israel how to live properly um, according to the law, statutes, and commandments. So, basically, you showing everybody to do evil for evil, and your congregation is agreeing with what he did, which is showing me that none of y'all are serious, and all of y'all take this for a joke. Golden because sword. if y'all didn't, the people Golden in the sword. comment section would be saying, go, go, forget they, the they comment section. Saying, I don't, co I don't control the comment section. Forget about that. Forget about that. It's me and you right now. Do you have a biblical question that you want to ask according to the scriptures i'll apologize i apologize for his behavior and just me and you right now what's your biblical question okay. you want to ask my, and listen 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 don't start cursing at me don't start disrespecting me i'm not disrespecting you don't disrespect me do we agree yeah i agree so here's my biblical okay. question all right show me book show me book chapter and verse where the Bible say you can apologize for another man's fault that he did to another you, man. You, you said me. you apologize. Golden sword, you're, you're, not, you're not letting me speak. You asked me a question. Golden I want to answer you. You asked me a question. I want to ask. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm doing for what Christ did. Another man did. Listen, listen to me, Golden Sword. Christ took on the sins of the nation. So any sins that my brother or offense that they do, even uh, I'm gonna get you the book chapter in first. Go to well, Romans chapter nine. Christ, I'm gonna, listen, Golden Sword, you asked me a question and I'm answering you. I'm doing blasphemy. just what Golden Sword. You asked me a question, I'm answering you. Romans chapter nine, verse one. Can we get that, please? You asked me, and on the spot, I'm giving you an answer. So you Christ. You Christ. Listen man. to me. Listen. Uh, yes, I'm supposed. Christ said to be like. Get, before we get that, uh, so you First Corinthians you chapter. Golden sword. You asked me for a, a chapter verse, and I'm yeah, giving it to you. Everything you yeah. ask me. So you're not going to listen to me. You're not going to let me answer. You're going to keep interrupting me. This is why they mute you, and this is why they don't let you into the room. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one. First, please, reader. The book of first corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1 be ye followers of me even as i also am of christ keep reading yes sir now i praise you brethren that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as i delivered them to you so he said to be followers and keep the ordinance and i'm going to do that now romans chapter 9 verse 1 he asked for a book chapter and verse romans 9 verse 1 the book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. So this is what Paul is saying, that he wished that he could take on the curses the same way Christ did for his brethren, his kinsmen, according to the flesh. So I'm taking responsibility for what my brothers did because we just read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 to be as Christ is. So I'm doing what Paul wrote in his letters. So whatever offense they did, I apologize for it. Let's move forward like men. Now ask your question, Golden Sword. Okay, okay. I want to respond to what you just said. I want you to respond. I want to respond to what you just said. So, sure. I just came in the room. I apologize to you for those men. And now it's me and you. I want to move forward. Okay. Don't read okay. the chat. Don't go any place okay. else. I just want me okay. and you to engage okay. in spiritual, I, I, scriptural I dialogue. To go ahead. Okay. So, we have it on record in um biblical smoke room coming from A1. Saw, so, we going to get this audio clip that in Israel, if somebody do something to you, let's just say if somebody robbed me, 
a, another black person robs me. The man who robbed me don't have to apologize to me or anything, but A1 can just randomly call from the other side of the country. He don't even know this man, and he can pick up the phone, dial up Golden Swords, and say, Golden Swords, I apologize for that person who I don't even know, who Golden I haven't Swords, even met in my me life. Spot. You put me on the spot. You, you put me on the spot you. so we can move forward, you. and that's what that's, I'm doing. That's Now, we got it on record, and he said he equated himself to Jesus trying to say that Jesus being his brother died on the Golden cross. Sword, I, don't wanna you, I don't want to interrupt you. I don't want to interrupt you. But do you have a biblical question that we could go back and forth with and we can move on? I apologize as one okay. of the speakers in the room and okay. I want to move on, Golden Sword. If okay, not, move, we're going to have to drop on. you and move to the next person. No, no, let's move on. I'm ready to move on, but I got you. And you know I got you. But anyway, this is what I want you all to do. You believe that Jesus Christ and the Father are not one and the same, and you believe Jesus was just a regular earthly man like you and I that came from the sperm of another human being. Now, I'm going to have you read two Bible verses that's going to get you in a dilemma, and you're going to be looking worse than that, um, that little um, crazy explanation you gave for apologizing for that dude, it's gonna even be looking worse than that. Golden so sword. what I want you to do right Golden now, A1, no. I, you ask you, I ask you, I ask you not to disrespect me, and I'm gonna ask I'm you one more time. You. Please don't disrespect me, Golden I'm Sword. I'm trying to give you respect. I'm trying to engage you as a man, and I just want you to get to the point so we can move on. Okay. Notice he told me not to disrespect him, but he didn't tell the dude who called me a name not to disrespect He's him. Not but anyway, he's not here. It's just me and you. I'm okay. going to give you one more yeah, chance really to go into the topic to like men. He is here. Now you lie because he's right above you. His name is ZB. His name is ZB. Golden Sword. When I here. say he's not here, when I say he's not here, it's me and you. Our mics are unmuted and you oh, and I are talking. His mic, is, his mic is. <laughs> Listen, Golden Sword. I'm trying to yeah, be patient here. with you, bro. Uh, okay. let, let me uh, ask you. Let me ask okay. you, Golden Sword. How old okay. are you? How old are you? How old are you? I don't want to reveal my age. What's the purpose of that? Because it lets me know what caliber of man I'm dealing with. If you're I'm a young man, man, if you're a young man, I deal with young men differently. You, you if you're an older with, man, I expect man. more decorum for you, with a, from I'm you more self-control, more gravity. Put it that way. I'm in my thirties. Okay. Put it. You're, that way. you're a young man. Yeah. I got almost yes. 20. I got 20 years on you. Yes. So you're a young that's man true. to me. Yeah, I got a, I got true. a son your age. So now yeah, I have true. to deal. With, I'm trying to deal patient with you and I'm trying to have mercy on you. So okay. I, I want to ask you a question. OK, this is what I want you to do. I want you to read. First Corinthians. Two. First Corinthians. Chapter 2, verse 11. I want you to read that. For what knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Okay. Now, notice in that verse it says, No one knows the faults of a man except the spirit within that man. For instance, I don't know what you are thinking inside of your head right now, cause I'm not your spirit. And likewise, vice versa, you don't know what I'm thinking right now, cause my spirit is not your spirit. And likewise, God is saying, for no one knows the faults of God, except the spirit of God, right? Now you believe Jesus was an ordinary, regular man. So that means every verse in the Bible applies to him as well. So now what I want you to do, I want you to pull up and read loud and clear as if it was a verse defending one of your arguments. I want you to read. You're imparting things. Listen, you're imparting things upon me and you're not giving me a chance to speak. 
I don't believe that Christ was a regular man. I believe that he was a man, but I believe that he's the son of God filled with the Holy Ghost as the savior of the nation of Israel. So I don't believe he's a regular man because there's no other human being that walked the earth with the level of spirituality that he had. So I do not believe that he's a regular man. So when you talk, okay. you got to give me a chance to address what you're saying. You can't okay. just say something and then move someplace else. That's okay. not fair. I'm not doing that to you. So okay. as you as you just stated, I do not believe that he's a regular man. Okay, fine. You believe that he from a sperm of a man, you believe that he was under the law. You don't believe that he is God the Father. So therefore, every verse that we read sword, in the Bible. Again, golden sword, I believe that he's here as a represent representative of right. God. Right, right, right. Okay, right, right. he is a Godhead. The representative of God okay. on earth. Okay. 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 Because he said in his, we read yesterday, he said, He who hath seen me hath seen the Father. Okay. When the disciples asked him to show the Father, what does he look like? He said, Here, have I been with thee so long that you don't know him? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Hey, one, can I can I proceed? Because you always yes, do you this. Can. Yes, you can. Go ahead. Okay. Well, all right. Thank you very much. Now, what I want y'all to do, I want you to read, go to the book of Matthew, and I want you to read chapter 12, verse 25. Matthew 12, verse 25. I got a golden sword. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Okay. You are in a dilemma. So now I'm going to ask you, if Jesus was a man who was keeping the laws of Moses, how y'all teach, and he was just a man that came from the sperm cell of Joseph, that means every law of spiritual physics in the bible would apply to jesus and he cannot break what is written in first corinthians 2 11 when it says for who knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit inside of that man so jesus having a spirit of an earthly man because y'all teach he is from the seed of joseph the only way to get out of that you would have to say the only way Jesus would have known their thoughts is because Jesus had the Father in him, like we as oneness teach. Otherwise, you are making the Bible contradict itself. Because that verse that you just read in Matthew 12, 25, clearly says Jesus knew their thoughts. Multiple people. He knew multiple people's thoughts. So if he is not the father incarnated in the flesh, he should not be able to break what is written in 1 Corinthians 2, 11. So you got a decision to make today. Which golden sword? I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit slow. Be patient with me. What did okay. he break? I don't understand. What did he break? Okay. Okay. Read 1 Corinthians 2, 11 again. Okay, give me a chance. I'm going to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. And it they says, saw, For what man him. knoweth the things of we man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Got him Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. God. We got him. Uh, but, are you going to explain it to me? Hey, I, I don't know what hey, you're talking hey, about now. Hey, hey, hey. You busted, man. Have a good night. I just destroyed your doctrine. Have uh, a good night. Hey, hey, just be patient with him, man. He's young. Listen, He's young. Listen, Let's pray you know, for him. Let's pray for Golden Sword. Golden Sword, we love you. You gotta pray for me. We love you. Yes. Okay. What you should do? What you should do, Golden Sword? If you go to our YouTube page. Israelite social is recorded on there. You could cut it. And you could put it on You could put it on a page. You could put it on a page and you can let the whole world see it, all right? Nigga. So golden sword. You, now you call, now you you calling me a nigga now? Nigga. 
See, see what yeah. I said about you. I gave you yeah. a chance. I was respectful. Yeah. And now you're calling me a nigga now. Great. Now you're disrespecting me now. Gone. Now you're disrespecting me. It's over with. You this got is crushed. why. Listen, hey, audience, 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 audience. As of you tonight, now boys. he will never come back in this room again. You see how I was nigga, patient you with him? Mute clip. him now. Mute him. Mute him. Mute him. Mute him. Mute him. Mute him. Audience, y'all see, y'all take witness. How many people we got in the room tonight? 1.1 thousand, sir. Okay, we have over a thousand people just that witness his disrespect, even with me being patient with him, being uh, respectful to him. So we're never going to let him back in this room as of tonight. I just wanted him to ban his own self. He took up our time. He disrespected me. He's belligerent. He don't make no sense. I think he has psychological issues. That's why I stopped dis dis dissing him back, reciprocating the same hey. thing. He, he's got multiple pages, too. We just dropped him off the stage, and he came right back up with a different name, he's, Archive all, XO. He's all able jokes to change aside, his name instantly. Z, all jokes aside, Z, I think he's suffering from a mental disorder. That's why I didn't go in on him, you know? Yeah. After a yeah. while, I listened to him talk, and I see that he's just not right in the head. And it could be like uh, what Judd said. There's a demon on him. He got demons on him that's just making him, this is his focus of the night, every night, making new pages, coming up, we be polite to him, he's disrespectful, he's cursing, He, I, I guarantee you, he's unstable in his house or whoever's around him. He don't have no family around him. A person that's like that, at this hour, he's bad, he's suffering with something mental, so we're not helping him here by letting him in the yeah. room, you know, so just let's like keep him said, up. Hey, yeah, let's him. just pray for him, and let's move on. All right, we have Mr. Wayne next in the queue. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, gentlemen. Going back to the title of your room or statement, all women pastors must be counseled. I'm actually in agreement with that. Um, I think that's um, something that needs to be said, something that needs to be called out. And <clears throat> we're so adamant about having women in authority, and that's something we're picking up from the American culture. We have, uh, there's biblical Christianity and we're, we're creating something I would call Americanized Christianity. So Americanized Christianity is the tail and not the, not the head. We follow instead of leading. And so, so I think that is something we're being called out. That's, that's, that's my two cents. I like it. I like it, Mr. Wayne. What what brought you to that that thought process that you you think they need to be counseled? What 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 instance made you realize that? Um, <clears throat> you know what it wasn't. It, it just it's immediately. You know the the word of God as you have First Timothy two eleven. Um, is plain and simple, and. For me, if the word said it, that settles it. It's not about whether it, it seems right to us. It, it's, it's what God said. And and that's what we're doing now. You know, we're like, well, it seems right. It seems that a woman should have uh, authority over men, you know, that, and, but the word of God says otherwise. And somebody said earlier, you know, well, what if she's giving wise counsel? Well, having authority over a man is meaning that the man is submitting to her and and that's what the scripture is condemning no man is to submit to the to to a woman and so for me what made me come to that conclusion is it was nothing you know when i came to faith about 25 30 years ago it was it wasn't a dis it wasn't an argument. It was, it was, it was, it wasn't even a thought. And so as the word reveals it, so be it. So that's, that's where, where I am. Um, I shake my head when we just, when I watch the church ignore God's word and put American culture first. And so that's the same thing with the, the homosexual movement the trans, you know, we're all bowing down, getting scared, nervous, afraid to speak up, 
ready to speak out. Um, we're all buying into this thing. And, it, and and let me run on and get get political with it. We we empower these people to put forth these insane laws, and then we got to cower down from the very same people that we voted into office. It, so and so it's the same thing with with now the world have women leading the country, and now we want. The women to lead the church. It's, it's so to Damn. me it was it was never it was never a, a, a light moment. Sounds sounds like uh, what you're speaking about, Mr. Wayne. That whole separation of church and state is a um, uh, smoke and mirrors for um, democracy uh, to creep into the church and ultimately guide the church in the way that it should think. Well, right, exactly, and that's what they do. You know, if you get a Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson, it's because they're um, I call it blackface. You know, if <clears throat> if I'm white and I want to sell something, some idea to the culture now, not just the black culture. If I, if I want to sell an idea to the culture, I got to put a black face on it. And then if I put a black face on it, if you criticize what the black face is saying, if you criticize what the black face is saying, then you're a racist. So this is this is the game that's being played. And so now the church, the only only voice that is heard in the church is the is the voice that is echoing the mainstream culture of America. Damn. Good That's point a right there. Hurt. That's a hell of an observation right there. And I, I, I agree with that, man. And I, I think a lot of that is that's how, um, as you was mentioning, um, homosexuality crept into the black church because the black woman is so accepting of it in America, in society, that um, it was pressure put on so-called spiritual leaders to treat everybody the same we all won you can't judge him and now that from what is in the world has now become a part of modern christianity where you've got uh man with sugar in their tanks leading the damn choir and got a woman on stage telling man how to be uh, a better simp to their wife Damn. Right. Good points, Mr. Wayne. Right, right. Right. And so that's that's just it. And you know, going back to like you, you, you kinda of mentioned like the the how a woman thinks, you know, the devil gonna work through the woman. So in that same passage, it 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 gives us the reason why God put that in place. He says it's because it was the woman who was deceived first. And so in her nature, she's the go-to. The devil said, let me, I, I, I'm not going to be able to take Adam down by telling him it's good to eat from the tree. But I, t I, but I can take her down, and she can take him down. So the woman Damn. is often used to seduce the church. Damn, Mr. Wade, you cook it right there, man. You is cooking and on point right there tonight. Man, good stuff right there, Mr. Wayne. Um, all right, all right. So whatever I could do to help. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mish. Yeah, so we got evangelists up next. So what you think about <clears throat> evangelists, what Mr. Wayne just said? You agree with that? Shalom, shalom. Um. Yeah, I mean, women, even though I got the title, uh, put up the title evangelist, doesn't mean that I don't agree with uh, women leading um, congregations. Like, mm, yeah, I'm not, and I'm not being a hypocrite about it because um, there's some women that really don't, they just want power over men. 
and they want to they want to like dominate them so the christian church really does have those type of women and will make many men fall i mean some of them you I mean to the point where some of the men want to kill them honestly um but so sister sister real yeah. quick so what do you think <clears throat> according to the scriptures is the role of a woman a role of a woman is to be a helper she's supposed to help and you know know her place and help in, in any way she can but um but not to be doing it to be seen though so i like it that's some good points you right right there you make sense a lot of uh, and i think you know you know a lot of uh why women don't want to fall under the divine role that God had ordained them to be, where they they will be much more happier in the divine role that God created them for. But the reason why they don't want to fall into that role, I think a lot of it has to do with the the social media quick fix instant gratification society that we live in today. Uh, what I mean by that, um, and these are all tools of Satan that, that the ungodly, Satan will work through the ungodly to put these tools in uh, on the forefront of, of people's minds. Um, uh, TikTok, it's all about how many likes and, and how you can, how many views you get. Instagram, um, no, I, I can't be, I can't be supportive and be in the back and not be seen and just be help me. Nope. I want to be seen. I want to be Instagram, uh, Facebook, look at me, Twitter. These are all mechanisms to be seen where now today, the, the way that society has gone, where God has God been removed at the church. I don't know. I know a lot of y'all don't go church no more. Yeah. But if you look at T D. Jakes and all of them, man, that is that is sweet lullabies to the ears. It is it is all contrary to God. It sounds good, but when you actually read the text of God, it's not in there. God has been removed from the church, mm -hmm. and what has taken place is instant gratification through social media, where to the point of where everybody wants to be seen. And if they're not seen, they feel like they their purpose in life has not been met because somebody has not liked their post, has not liked their image. So they have to be seen in order to feel uh, justified in their life that it's worth something because if they're not seen, and you're just doing what you're supposed to do as a divine in your divine femininity to be a help me, then that's not gratifying enough. So therefore I must be seen. That has taken place in the church, uh, because God has been removed from the church totally. I mean Can I say something? I agree one hundred percent with that. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I was, I was just saying, can I say something? This is uh, Antonio. <clears throat> uh, let's see who's that. Antonio. Okay. Yes. Hey, hey, let me, yeah. let me see. Let me, let me, let me just check. Evangelist, was you, was you done with your thought on, on what you was thinking? Well, I, well, I kind of had some more to say, but it, in as, um, to basically clarify what I do, cause I'm in, I'm in the truth, but, um, the title evangelist, I only did that just to be having it on there because someone on Facebook had given me that title. Like, yeah, no. Um, but uh, what I do is um, just to clarify, so no one won't take it, you know, to the left, is that there's a lot of individual lights that live in my area who they don't congregate and they don't get together, but they want to. And so I just, created a safe space for us to keep feast days and um pretty much i do classes but i call it a class but it's just my you know giving my knowledge on things but i'm not i don't call myself a teacher and 
um some of the brothers do they do correct me and i take that correction because it is you know they are you know the man the order of the most high man has authority over women so which i'm okay with because you know some things i have to learn the hard way some things i want the men to deal with so yeah you said <laughs> yes, you're in the truth right yes sir what did you well, learn the truth from? where did say you learn the truth from say that one more time where did you learn the truth from um i when i came into the truth uh it was under iuic okay so why are you not with iuic because i was being rebellious Oh, so you left out of there and you just started doing things? No, to... I didn't leave. I was suspended because of my rebellion. How long you I been was, gone? I was now? being wicked. How long you been gone now? Um, for three years now. Three years? Yes, sir. You know me, right? Yes, sir. I think I do. You, yes. and, I, you and I have spoken. Yes, sir. Have you made amends with the people that you've been rebellious to? I, I honestly, um, no, I have not, though I do want to. Well, um, that's your first step that you should do, okay? Your first step for is before you even go and speak to anybody else, because again, this is me, this is how I think. I'm just gonna get personal with y'all for a minute. As I said, every time you people allow me, the beautiful audience allows me to. When I sit back and I think of everything I did wrong to someone, it puts fear in me because I know, according to the scriptures, I'm going to be faced with judgment. And I don't want to be rejected by the Messiah, as it says in First um, in Matthew chapter 7, where he says that he's going to tell people, depart from me. That's my greatest fear. My greatest fear is not dying. Okay, I've come to grips with dying. And our teacher has let us know that there's a strong possibility that because we're on the front line we could die from one day to the next so i'm wrapping my mind around that the greatest fear is dying and going before the throne of god or being alive and meeting his son and not being accepted of him and that's what you should do okay because a lot of time give me that scripture in sirach there's one that is wise and teacheth many because a lot of times we'll get that we had a brother that we put out of our school and he would follow the camp around and he would send people to the school. I've had people tell me, yo, I met brother so-and-so. I met him in the train. I met him on the bus. I met him in the uh, the restaurant. I met him at subways. I met him. And he told me, go see you guys. Okay, but he still has not gotten himself right. And I don't want that to be you. You got the scripture, reader? Yes, sir. Read it, please. The book of Sirach. Or Ecclesiastes chapter 37 and verse 19. There is one that is wise and teacheth many, and yet is unprofitable to himself. That's that's a scary thing. And a lot of people believe that, okay, I'm in the scriptures, I'm in the truth, I got my fringes, I'm doing this, I'm keeping the Sabbath. But what they're doing is not profitable to himself in the end. Read on. Verse 20. There is one that showeth wisdom in words and is hated okay you could get people together you could bring people together but if there's hatred for you it's a problem if there's dislike for you it's a problem one thing i know is whoever don't like me is because of something personal because once you've made it clear to me that i did something to you i'm gonna apologize i'm gonna do my best to fix it because i don't want your blood on my hands there's nobody walking this earth right now that i have a gripe with that could say a1, he did this to me. And I came to him and I tried to resolve it. And he said, no, I don't get down like that. There's nobody. People have tried repeatedly. But because I know that the greater good is to obtain the kingdom, I try to make and keep peace with everybody. That's why I say even when I teach, even the people who I go hard on, I say, if you sincerely come to me to work it out, we're going to rectify the situation. It will never, ever be me. Never, ever. No one will ever put me in that box where I got to stand before the Lord and the Lord can review the videotape and say, yo, he was trying. She was trying. And you had a hard heart. One thing I learned about the scriptures is forgiveness. So a lot of times when people get uh, put out of the organization and so many years have passed 
and they're not taking the steps, they wind up in a place like you, where they're wise and teaching many, but there's still hatred around them. There's still a dark cloud around them. There's wise that uh, they know a lot of scriptures, but they're unprofitable to themselves. So my advice to you is don't let that be you. You understand? Yes, sir. How do I take the steps to even go back and like, to no, ask for forgiveness? Again? I'm sorry, what state were you in? Texas. Right. So I, I know your situation very well. And um, I've even mediated on your behalf for them to give you a chance. And the scriptures say, time heals all wounds. Maybe when you step to the people, because time has passed, like even me, I was telling and I'd be like, yo, I'm never, I'm this and I'm that and no, hell no. But as time passed, my heart, you know, I look at things differently. So sometimes maybe not, right now is not the right time, but still you want to at least know between you, the Lord is watching. Okay, mm -hmm. that you're doing what you need to do so that you're not judged for something that was out of your control. You have the ability to um, fix the situation. Or at least when judgment comes, the Lord can review your tape and say she tried. Is that fair? That's fair. Yes, sir. All right. I'll mute my <laughs> mic. Thank you. Shalom. All right. So we had uh, Takari next in the queue. Car, you there? What you got on the topic? Hello. Yes, what you got on the topic, Takar? So, um, I just had a question, just a advice question. Go ahead. Okay. So. I just want to know, like, how do you go about leading, like, not leading and not, but still being a helpmate? First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Get that, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The book of First Peter, chapter 3 and verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Because a lot of times in marriages, like, for instance, with me, why I had problems with uh, a woman, no matter what I said, the woman would tell me, my friend said this, or my mother said that. Or I'm like, listen, it's me and you right here. Stop taking our dilemma and bringing it back to your mother, bringing it back to your friends, bringing it back to your co-worker. So that's why the scripture says, read it again. Likewise, ye wives. Be in subjection to your own husbands. If he's speaking to you logically and he's not speaking to you in, into a way that could do you harm, you be in subjection to him. We're not, you can't do this with some ungodly, wicked, undisciplined man. I'm not saying that because there's a lot of women you may be attached to, wicked negras. I'm not saying that. If he's telling you to go against the laws, you don't listen to him. If he's telling yo, you to yo, defy yo, yo, what yo, God yo. says, say yo, that again. Yo, yo. Whoever that person uh, is, please. Yeah, that was some that was some nigger. I dropped him. Go ahead. Okay, hey, good, good. If when it says to be in subjection, it's because he's telling you what the Bible says. You understand that? I agree. Yeah. Read on. I do understand. And Read yes, on. I am drunk. That if any obey the word, they also out the word be won by the conversation of the wives. So you can win him over with your godly conversation, because he may be a man that. He don't obey the word. He's not listening. You take your time with him and you bring the word of God to win him over. Because a lot of times some women will get into a situation where they, their man is weak. You as a spiritual woman or a woman of God, you got to build him up. Don't tear him down. Don't use every opportunity to belittle him. You're going to lose. Okay. Men have egos. And as I said before, I have to be very clear how I speak. If you're dealing with somebody that's ungodly and undisciplined, everything I'm saying now does not apply. Okay? But if you can get him to listen to the word of God and he respects you and he's loving you according to the Bible, you can work things out with him. Read on. While they behold Hi. your conversation Hi. coupled with fear. They behold your chase. Hi, my, my husband is very godly. It's just we've been, we haven't, been seeing eye to eye because of some old circumstances. Yeah, My husband is strong. He's not weak. 
It's what, just, is, what are you not seeing eye to eye on? It's just, I guess you could call it the interpretation of the strip, scripture. But tell us, tell us here. There's a lot of learned men here. We can say who's right, who's wrong. Tell us you're in biblical smoke court. Tell us who's wrong. Then, 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 like they say on TV. Tell us, what are you not seeing eye to eye on? It's it's not even that. It's, he always thinks that I'm trying to go against him if I'm just trying to speak. And it's not that I'm trying to go against him. A lot of times I'm agreeing with him. But he's automatically got to say in his head that I'm trying to go against him. And even after I do what he's told me to do or what he says that he wants, and even with me trying to submit to him, regardless of how I feel about it, it still turns into a problem. And it seems like he's just looking for a way to be against me, which I know that's not what he was or what he really is, but I feel like he's fighting other things while listening to the truth. So when you say he's fighting other things, like what? Just like random stuff that he hears or sees on anything, like there's a lot of truth that comes from social media, but there's also a lot of lies that gets mixed up in it. Okay, so I'm holding on to one thing. You said that your husband is a godly man. If he's letting social media lead his thought process and your relationship, that's not a man of God. If he's listening to some, the scriptures say that the best thing in God's eyes is a husband and a wife that agree together. Can we get that in Sirach? That's what the scriptures say. So there has to be a reason why he's disagreeing with you and why there's a uh, uh, a disconnect in the relationship because the Bible says this. You got it, reader? Yes, sir. Read it, please. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25 and verse 1. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. So if he's a godly man, He's going to stand on this right here. Whenever there's arguing, there's evil. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says. Okay? The Bible says that wherever there's arguing, there's evil. There's no misunderstanding. Somebody is being evil. That's why I'm being specific with my line of questioning. I do a lot mm -hmm. of counsel. And if I ask enough questions, there's, there's not, a couple has never walked away from me, and I don't know who the problem is. Never. It's never happened. It's clear. Even when they say I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll just call two or three witnesses, as the scriptures say, and they're like, A1, you was right. It's him. It's her. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking you for specifics. You're in the room. You're asking for counsel, but I need specifics. What is it that you're disagreeing with? Just so my that I um, called earlier. So it's just different stuff like we don't be in complete disagreement like i said there's a lot of stuff that he's bringing scripture to me and i'm agreeing with him he just don't want me to talk at all so if he's bringing scriptures to you and he's right then why do you need to talk if he's right you like if the scripture said that he's your lord he's your head it should be like you know what this is what the scripture say honey you're right he is and i told him that but i also want him hear my my comprehension of it what, what is it that, are you saying that he's breaking down the scriptures wrong no, the scriptures no, that he brings to you is he correct or is he taking them out of context a little both uh, and just be like there's not there hasn't been one time where i've try to go against anything that he's told me to do on a like obedience level but he'll like disrespect me by calling me out my name or yelling at me and not letting me not talking calmly with me while I'm trying to talk calmly to him and just try to make other things our issues. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. His feelings on me. Let me show you something. Go to, reader, go to James chapter 4, verse 1. This is why I made my statement. James chapter 4, verse 1. The book of James, chapter 4 and verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? 
person is being honest. Why would people fight? Where does a fight start from? It's going to tell you. Read on. Come they not hence? Even of your lust that war in your members? Something inside of you, there's a disconnect. Somebody wants something that's causing the wars and the fighting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why I'm asking you for specifics. Do you guys argue about the bills? Do you argue about uh, who's going to uh, clean up? Do you argue about uh, uh, the children? What is it? It's sometimes, it's sometimes the bills. It's sometimes he feels like I, he feels like I don't pay attention to him or that I am nagging him when he's out. And I, all I ask is that he just let me know if he's going to go somewhere extra that he said he was going to be. So I'm not worried. It does so it's into a big argument. About that's, how he does that. that's understandable. That's understandable for uh, a man to let his wife know his whereabouts. I understand that. But again, the information that you're bringing here, no one can really assess the situation without something specific for me to say, you're right, you're wrong. Or you're, I mean, the stuff that you're saying is in any relationship, you know, uh, if, if anybody, if, if, if uh, friends or whatever, we can't find each other, we'd be like, bro, where you was at? You didn't even let me know where you was going. I was looking for you. Children, where you was at? You didn't let me know I was going for you. Husband and wife, that's normal for people to respond that way. Now, does your husband have a habit of just disappearing and you don't know where he is? Sometimes, yes. So like, how long? Tell me he's is going it a day? Like, is it an hour? It's, he... hours. it's just a couple of hours. It's like maybe at most it's been like eight, nine hours. But do you call him? Not... Do you text him? Yes, I call him and then he. And you don't respond me about why I'm calling him. Okay, where is he when he disappears? I mean, he's be with family, so it's not a big deal. Like I said, I don't even care if he's out with friends. I just would like so to. So follow me, follow me, follow me. If my woman, right, I'm going to my family's house. The first thing I'm going to say to my woman is, babe, you want to come? Get dressed. Let's go. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Anytime I didn't bring a woman around in my family is because my family didn't like her or there was something more going on that I just didn't want to see. But for me to disappear for a whole entire eight hours, that's a work day, and not contact my woman. And then when she contacts me, I come back and like, what are you asking me for? Something is wrong. That's not love. That's not a loving relationship. For you to be away from your spouse, let's say one hour, two hours, three hours. Of him just deciding, you know, I'm not answering my phone. I don't want to talk to you. a lot to the whole story. I would like for both of us to be able to talk to you on a different time because I don't want to take everybody's time. Stay. But, yeah. Stay. Yeah. So, what state are you in? We're in Georgia. Okay, we got a location in Georgia. Some of the teachers are there. Uh, you can stop by. You can contact us. We got the um email us up top. We could give you an invite. We meet on Saturday for the Sabbath. You know, and like I said. It's just sad that it's, how long you guys been married? We will be married two years on Saturday. You guys got children? We have one on the way. Okay, so it's sad now that while you're carrying your firstborn child, is this your firstborn child? Yes. That you are in a dilemma right now. The, the, the mental mind state of you affects the child. Agreed. You understand that whatever you're carrying on you is shown. It's been scientifically shown that it's going to disrupt that child. And that child is going to be born with whatever was bothering mommy. So something that you need to fix. You know? yes, so just, you know, take it serious what I'm saying. There's always an answer. And sometimes the thing is you just need to get to the bottom of it so that you can move on. You guys are newly married. Two years is nothing. You know, and for yes, you to be this way with your new child coming now and you're this way, it will only get worse. It will okay. only get, how old are you? Um, 26. Okay, you're a baby. I just married off my daughter who's 24. 
Okay, you're a baby, and I didn't even want her to get married. I felt that she was just too little in my eye. So you're a baby, and there's so much more for you to expect as a newborn mom, so young, with already dealing with these issues in a relationship. It always turns out bad. It never just magically fixes itself. I've seen a lot of breakups since I've been teaching this Bible. And there's a lot of stuff that I can't fix, but I will bring you to a reasonable conclusion of who's right and who's wrong. I, I can't say we fix everybody's relationship, but when we finish with counsel, it will be clear who's right and who's wrong. So get I, the, think we're uh, both right. I think we're both wrong in different, different areas. Like I said, there's a lot to the whole story. Um, right now you're being respectful of him, but there's never any way that two people could be right and wrong at the same time. I've never ever seen it. Okay, there's your opinion, his opinion, and what God says. Okay, and okay. usually when you're having that uh, that back and forth, some this this where James chapter four verse one comes in. That's why it says, "From whence cometh wars and fightings among you?" Come they not even of your lust that war in your members? There's something in your spirit that only the scriptures could come out. Only the scriptures will bring it out and make it clear who's right and who's wrong. Okay? The scriptures say that uh, uh, the laws of God are uh, converting the soul. Get that for me real quick in Psalms. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. So you believe that this Bible will perfectly bring out the truth of the situation. There's no flaws in this Bible. Read on. Converting the soul. Because when I came into the scriptures, and I, there was a conversion process. Where I see myself, I'm a better man. You couldn't have told me nothing was wrong with me before when I wasn't in the scriptures. Because I felt everybody's just like me. We all fall short of the glory. We're all sinners. But once I went through that spiritual conversion, I look at people differently. Read on. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Read on. Making wise the simple. So that's why we need the scriptures and the element to resolve your situation. Okay, you're in, a, you're in a very bad place right now to be such a young expecting mother and going through relationships issues so early, so early into the marriage. Okay, things are very, very bad. I agree. Okay. All right, so you can stick around on stage. You can listen to the to the dialogue. We're here every night, you know, till five, six o'clock in the morning, and you could just come back. And maybe you're not ready to open up now, but when you are, we got the email address, we got a location. Our top teachers are in your area. I mute my mic. Hey, all praises. I'm gonna take this chance to uh, re replug the room real quick. So. Topic of the night, all women pastors must be counseled, 1 Timothy 2 and 11. Y'all can hit us up at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. We do have a beginner's booklet. If you're looking to get one, hit us up at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. I've seen a lot of evangelists, prophets down there in the audience. You know, please come up on stage, state your case. Uh, till then, we're going to move on in the queue. I think we got men's up next. You there? Men's. All right. All right, man. It's on you. Good evening, brothers. Um, so I'm looking at the title. It said, All women past this must be canceled. Uh, then you guys pulled up 1 Timothy 2.11. Uh, can we have somebody read it so we can see it in context? The book of First Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So in my opinion, my opinion, the Bible says that um, a woman can't be a pastor in a church setting. That doesn't mean that she cannot teach or preach the word of God. Um, but when you say counsel, are you talking in the church setting and out of the church settings? We're specifically talking about a woman over a congregation teaching people the Bible. 
Got you. Yeah. So that's according so to the Bible. A, yeah, We're so not talking about a woman telling her children or telling her neighbor a scripture. We're talking about a woman set up as a position of power, the way the men are in the Bible to be over a congregation. Yeah. So in the church settings, I agree with you um, in this particular matter, but that doesn't mean that she needs to be quiet. She does have every right as a Christian and as a woman of God to teach uh, and to preach just so outside of the you church disagree setting. With, you, did, you disagree with 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, verse 33, 34? Let's pull it. Let's pull it. Get it, please. 1 you got it? First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Read on. Let your woman keep silence in the churches, mm -hmm. for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they so, are commanded. So stop. so stop. That's it. Do you agree with that or disagree with that? Yeah, so I agree. Like I said, in the church settings, that's what I'm saying. That's what we're yeah. talking about. We didn't say that a woman can teach her family, her son, her sister, or her, her friend. It says that the it uh, says that the elder women group. are to guide the younger women. Women's there is a, a there, uh, there, there is a position in the Bible, a role that a woman plays, and the Bible mm -hmm. is specific. We're talking about in the churches, like Juanita Bynum. Joyce Myers, uh, all these uh, female pastors, evangelists, prophetess, should they be in, in, in a position over the church according to the word of God? That's what the, the discourse is in this room. I think Maine, um, he agrees with us. I'll praise. Jared, I came in late. Has there been any person that's been opposition from the hours that I missed? Uh yeah, we had a guy that was in opposition. He he was, but he was, you know, he was um respectful the whole time. But he was in opposition. He um, gave any scriptures? Uh, I came in late on that also. Um, uh, he went to Deborah, you know, like a lot of people do. Went to Deborah. We explained that. Um, that's the only ones I can really remember. He went to. Yeah, this is going to be a tough room because not one person will be ever be able to bring up a scripture to substantiate uh, something out of what the title of the room is saying. Don't. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't see anybody who's going to be able to successfully show their stance in opposition to the title of the topic that we're going over yeah i think it'll be all opinionated i don't know man was you finished you muted i don't know if you knew you was muted or not no no again if y'all stay on this subject then of course like i said inside of a church settings i don't believe that a woman could lead um now there is a lot of women in the bible that were okay. used by god so, but so do you like believe, settings, do you believe that like those women pastors should uh step down no now now in my opinion, yes, there's a lot of things that need to happen in the church. Um, but what happens? But what, what we're talking about here is women pastors that are set up over congregations. That's what we're talking about specifically. Mm -hmm. So um, you got pastors, you got evangelists. Yeah, we're talking uh, about the pastors. You, I don't know why you keep going somewhere else. Because you did say that in the church setting. You said yeah, outside in the church, church settings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a touchy uh, subject, so like, but at the same uh, time. Like Joyce Myers, right? She's the yeah. head of a congregation. Mm -hmm. Biblically, should she be? 
Biblically, no. But did the Lord speak to her? That's what I'm saying. You don't know what the Lord is speaking to these people. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, I mean, if I tell you that the Lord spoke to me and he told me to do a certain thing that goes against what the Bible says. Well, we know we, you ain't listening to the I Lord just, because you in, you in fallacy. So we not don't, don't put yourself just, in well, that. Well, the Lord spoke to me to, um, to be in what I am. So you accept that? No, you don't. You can't. You can't just say you. Judge, I don't God. accept nothing you say. Well, the, well, the Lord, the Lord spoke to me. So if I just say the Lord spoke to me, then that's that's a supersede with everything, right? Because that's what we do. That's what a lot of Christians do. They say the Lord spoke to me. I have a personal relationship. Just because it's written in the Bible, it doesn't matter because the Lord spoke to me and told me something different than what He put in His book with the spirit of the most high God for us to be, um, to go to. So no, like the Lord, I'm, I'm not going with that. The Lord spoke to me stuff. It's gotta be written as it is written. So that can be justified. Not saying that you yourself said that in a church setting, no. And so now I'm asking you about a church setting and you kind of going back on what you just said. See, yeah, because only again, um, like I said, I'm in agreement with y'all because of the order is what is God, man, and then woman. Right. Right. So, so you do you believe that Joyce Myers, uh, Juanita Bidem, and other women that are pastors over churches, that they shouldn't be in those positions? What I'm saying is that the man, the men need to step up and come so out you, of this doctrine and pastor, step up. They shouldn't be the, the head pastors. The men should be. Men should be head pastors, but again, I can't over I can't overstep what Jesus it? said. No, 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 because you don't you, you don't want to get inside of the Lord business. Well, Who no, am I to say? Lord yeah, wrote but, down his business. yeah, he wrote down his business, yeah. just like he wrote down the law, and then he did something new in the New Testament. So you don't yeah. want to overstep your boundaries. He told people to keep the law in the New Testament too. That's the fruits of the spirit. Yeah, but we talked oh. about that. We talked about that yesterday. Yeah, how how the law you. was a no. It, it's not about <laughs> losing. We talked about how the law was a schoolmaster. Was yesterday, you was no, We talked look, about how the law was a schoolmaster. Look at how you contradicting yourself. Now are we going? Well, we're going to have a long conversation, look, or we're going to talk right about this. Think about how you're contradicting yourself right now. You said you agree with us that in a church setting that women shouldn't be heads of the Based church. off of what the word so of God now, says. And so now I'm asking you specifics and you're saying, well, well what if God talk, spoke to them personally? Then now that means everything you just said, because all preachers say that God came to them. Right. Everyone said that God spoke to them. So now that what what you just said is now yeah, because more. you don't know how to you don't know how people are being blessed through uh through, you know through those women you understand what I'm saying now if they talk about false doctrine stuff like that then you know of course I'm I'm not with it you well know? it's false doctrine for a woman to be the head of but well people but 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 when men like you and these false doctrines and speaking it's fueling out this false stuff. We don't have enough men leading, so then the Lord going to use whoever He want to use, and that is not my it's, it's not my place to say that He can't use who He want to use. That's okay. not my place. That's not hey, my Judd, business. Chuck, can I ask him a question? I yes. want to ask this question to you, brother. You said that there's a possibility that the Lord could have spoken a word to this to a woman to put her in a position. The Lord can speak to whoever. Like for instance. She don't have to be a pastor. She could be an evangelist. She could be a prophetess. You see what I'm We're saying? We're talking about that. That's why we keep reiterating. We're talking yeah. about a woman in position on earth over a congregation. Are you saying that there's a possibility that God could speak to a woman and give them a message mm -hmm. uh, separate to that woman that will put them in a position over a church? Yeah, well, he did it for Deborah. In the Old Testament, Deborah she was, was a judge. not over a congregation. Deborah was not she over was, a congregation. She was a judge. What she, was she not? I'm asking, listen to me. I'm asking you a simple question, and you're evading it. No, no, are no, I'm not. Because y'all yes, Old yes, Testament. Y'all Old yes, Testament. That's why I brought up Deborah. Yes, you are. First, we can go to Deborah. Let's get that, please. Judges chapter four and verse nine. Is it on? Okay. 
of Judges chapter 4 and verse 9. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding five. the journey thou takest. Let's, Let's read verse 5. Because this is her stance with the account. Because everybody runs to Deborah. So we're going to let her words speak. Okay? Uh, start with 5 verse let's start with six and read down judges chapter four and verse six and she sent and called barak the son of abinah judges, oh, judges chapter five and verse six in the days of shamgar the son of anath in the days of jael the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked through byways the inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose. That I arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods, then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? Now verse 9, she's going to tell you her stance. Read it. My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. So the governors were the leaders. Your heart is your mind. She says, my mind is towards the governors, the leaders of Israel that offer themselves willingly. She never took a position of authority over the men. There's nowhere in the scripture that it, it says that. It does. This is, you ain't read it in seven? You ain't read it. said the mother for Israel. Told, what, what she did was not a mother, she, not a mother in was, Israel. What she did was instruct Barak because he was a coward. He was a weak man, so she exhorted him to go to war. He said, "I would not go to war unless I have the instructions." And she gave him the instructions as a woman of God. She was never ever in a position of power. That's why she said, "My heart is towards the governors of Israel." Hey, you missing okay, it. She didn't, she not didn't a mother. No and seven is say no not battle. a mother. She didn't fight no battle. She didn't fight no battle. And you don't have no scripture where she was over the congregation. She was leading a weak, cowardly man. Barak was a weak man. So everybody runs to Deborah and they don't keep it in context. I want you to show me where she was running the church. Show me where she was going to war and show me where she was an authority figure. Okay. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. So that same scripture in verse seven, you read the KJV. Here go to NLT. It say there were a few people left in the village. He got cut off. Yeah, yeah, tell her don't cut me off real quick. Hey, I just want to read you really, verse 7. Really, you went, you're going in and out. Ain't nobody oh. touching you. Yeah, they are. But look, look, right in verse 7, it say, until Deborah oh, arose a as a mother. We got a reader. Yeah, but I'm emphasizing something. I'm not actually reading. Verse. Hey, go ahead and read that, Jonah, verse 7 for him. Judges chapter 5 and verse 7. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel. Until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods, then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. So again, it says that a mother for Israel, not a mother in Israel. She was the mother for Israel. And even though her heart was for the commanders, her heart and her mind, she was grateful. That's a grateful passage that they gave their self willingly to go to war. That don't mean that she was submissive under them. She was a judge. I just finished telling you, we know the scenario. She exhorted a weak man in a position of power to go and fight for the nation and that's what she said my heart is toward the leaders of israel she exhorted him he said i'm not going to war unless you say to okay and that's all she's giving god the glory to and she's making it clear she was never in a position of authority so everybody goes to Deborah. so i just want since every all these expert christians show me where Anywhere in the Bible where Deborah was in a position of authority over the nation of Israel. 
just explained it to you, brother. No, you didn't explain I did. yes, nothing. I did. Yes, you didn't I did. Nothing. Yes, I the did. The reason why, the reason why Barack wouldn't want to go to war is because he was weak, and a woman exhorted him. You don't have no scripture to prove she was over a congreg congregation, or she went to go and fight with a spear and with a shield. Is he muted? Is he talking? Yeah, no. So the uh, let me get out this one real quick. Yeah, so your understanding, your honest, you need to go back into the study of that, eh? Because you're reading it out of context. I'm reading it. Are you saying? Are you saying that the Lord never used Deborah at all? I'm telling you. I'm telling you that was she a judge? Listen, 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 listen. I just finished saying to you that as far as a position of power at that time, we had a weak man. The man that was supposed to go to war was weak. And when you read the scripture, he didn't want to go to, uh, to battle until he got assurance from her. Listen to what you just said. He was a weak man. And I said before we even came to Deborah that if the men is not leading and stepping up, then the Lord could use whoever he want to use. We went to Deborah, that and that's the Peter. same thing we just, I just said. I just read that. Let's go, go to First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. I just read that previously. Even a wife has that authority. First Peter 3, verse 1. Read it, please. First Peter chapter three and verse one. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. That's what Deborah did. Okay, she used her conversation to win over a man that wasn't right spiritually with God. It's gonna go more. Keep reading. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on off apparel, but let it be the hidden man of heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So that's how the borrower was. That's why she said her heart, her mind, her spirit was for the governors, for the leaders. The same way this woman in her house, she'll come across a man that's not right with God. She can persuade him with her words. It's written in the Old Testament. It's written in the New Testament. It's written with Nabal. And what's her name again? What's Nabal's wife? When they was about to kill him and wipe out everybody and his wife used the right words to speak to King David and their house was spared. Abigail, it's written with Nabal and Abigail. I could give you numerous instances of a woman with, this, with a godly spirit speaking to the men in a way that will benefit the situation so that no harm comes to them. That's what Deborah did. That's what Abigail did. And that's the instructions given in the New Testament. A meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God, is not corruptible. I'm going to ask you one more time before we move on. Give me a scripture where any woman, let's forget about Deborah, any woman was put in a position over the church to lead the people. You're on. Yeah, so um, I can't come up with a name right off hand. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, but I'll definitely bring that information back to you. But I do know what the word says. Huh? Come back. You could go and Google it. And no, 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 no. I'll come back with the with the thorough research. Well, I'm not going to just what's going. I'll come back with a thorough Google research it because it's 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 not in the Bible. It is definitely in the Bible. Okay, I just don't have so it off hand. We'll, we'll be here. It's 148. We'll be here. When you find it, you come back. I mute my gotcha. mic. Hey, hey, real quick too. And what he was bringing up is her being a mother, right? We can read, go to Proverbs 31 real No, quick. she was a judge is what I said. Now, you say a mother like three or four different Because that's what the scripture says. She was the well, mother of Israel, but she was really a judge. So we said mother, and then you said you didn't say mother. Now you're saying you did say mother. Just just stay on mute. The scripture said mother, but she, she's a judge. Said mother, and I'm about, about to bring the scripture about a mother, what the mother's role was. Proverbs 31, verse 1. Proverbs. Chapter 31 and verse 1. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. His mother taught him. Now, he's a king. She definitely doesn't have authority over the king. But guess what she did do? 
she gave advice to the king. She she taught the king as in showing him, look, you should do this. Read that. Keep reading. What? My son. And what? The son of my womb. And what? The son of my vows. Give not thy strength unto women. So the mother told her son, which is the king, to not give your strength unto women. Right? Now, this was a woman, a mother. And she's given advice to her to her son because just like Deborah, her, her heart is toward the governors of her people. So for her to have a strong king, she wants to make sure that she doesn't get he doesn't give his strength over to a woman. Read, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Go ahead. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, Read. lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. So we can read all the way through Proverbs 31, all the way to the end. And he's, she, she's giving him advice on how to be a good leader. And a Man, good go to Judges 4.4. 4. Right, Judges 4.4. 4. Hold on real quick. Let me... But what she's not doing, she's not trying to rule over him or be an authority over him. She's giving him advice on how to be a good leader. And one of her first words was, don't give your strength to a woman. I mute my mic. Hey, I got another one. Uh, Rita, go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 2, to show about the mother figure, because he put emphasis on mother. So we're going to show what the role of a mother does. 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, chapter six and verse six. 2. And they that have believing masters. I'm sorry. Them... You're in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse could be me. I'm sorry, Second Timothy chapter one, verse two. Second Timothy chapter one and verse two. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God who I serve for my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. While I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. So he said, before I got to you, I saw godliness in your grandmother and then in your mother and then you. He reminded them that, okay? So there's numerous instances, and we also left out Judith. It was the same thing. The Lord used Judith when they were having issues over the king. So there are, are documented places in the Bible where the Lord will use a woman to rectify a situation, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about women being in a position of power over the church. Women being in a position of power over the church. Not as a mother, as a pastor, as an evangelist, as a priest, as a prophetess. Give us a scripture in the Bible of women being in a position of power over the church leading the church hey y'all may have to change the title of the room to something else because you're not going to get it every christian is just going to keep using deborah and after deborah they have nobody else hey hey what's crazy is that you know that 
people are on here just for contention, right? Because the brother said that women shouldn't have authority in the church. He said that. He's like, are y'all talking about in the church or y'all talking about outside of the church? We said, because he's, so he, we said, no, we talking about in the church. He's like, oh, okay. Because outside of the church, yeah, right? But then when we ask the question about women in the church, he disagreed with that too, even though he already said um, that they shouldn't have authority in the church. So it just lets you know that, you know, it's in uh, some people that come in this room just to be confrontational and not to agree. It picked it up quick. I was going to let him slide. But when you started pressing him, your spirit picked up real quick that he's double minded. Right. Because, he, he, you know, he's been in here many nights, you know, I think he, you know, you know, threatened one of the fighters and stuff like that. You know, all kinds of little weird stuff that people do from the comfort of their home. But, um, you know, he's just he just one of them, another one of them spirits that's been here for a long time that come in the room to to just, you know, he 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 disagree with everything. So it is what it is. Um, you know, one minute he says women shouldn't be authority over the churches. And then when you ask him about it, he goes, well, if you know, God may have spoke to her. It's like, OK, <laughs> you know, maybe he, him. He maybe. Said, that's what I was going to ask him. I want to know. Or maybe someone could tell me other than him. Tell me a woman that's in a position over a church now where God spoke to the woman and we can confirm it. Or any man, any man right now walking this earth that could say God spoke to me and we can confirm that what God said to that man or that woman, they should be in authority over the church. Can anybody do that? Uh, uh, just, oh, yeah. Are you asking have, have any men been any, chosen or any man right now that's over no, church? No, Just no, listen I, to me. I, Let me ask I, more I questions so we don't have, so we don't have no. to keep saying it again. Any person, I don't care if it's male or female, any person right now that a word has been spoken to them where we could say that this person should be an authority over the church. Now, now what I can disagree is is that I think men. There have been men that have actually been called to preach or to lead a church. And I, I can I can say that one of the pastors that, that I know have actually been called because he wasn't able to sleep. He wasn't he was trying to run away. Even um give give an example, um Jonah, he tried to run away. God spoke to that man and he told him he tried to run away. What did he do? Put him in the belly of a fish. So I mean, I believe there are men who are called to be over authority or of some sort of mission for god i mean even if, if that is preaching you can't run away from what god called you to do Brother, i could tell the same story i what i'm doing here i didn't wake up one day and said i wanted to do this if i didn't meet the men in this room i would be in a club pouring liquor on women like the way niggas do like you see in tv and the music videos okay this was not my calling this was not my choice I will be in, I will be flying here, flying there, going to this country, going to that country. I will be doing everything opposite of what I'm doing in this room. I will be getting sleep because I was getting a lot of sleep until I went into this direction of now I'm teaching the Bible. Now I don't get no sleep. So everything you said, I've heard. I want someone who, after they give their testimony, it will be crystal clear, you know, this brother right here, God called him to do this. So are you Are you disagreeing that no man has ever been called to lead the church? Is in, the just, Bible, in the Bible, yes. But outside of the Bible, I'm asking for any human being, any pastor anywhere in the world that's over a church now, that we can see by his works, by his teaching, God has called this man to do this work. So do you disagree that no man has been called to preach the word? Is that what you're saying? Is that no, God I'm, not saying no that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm leading based on what you said. You said the woman could have been called. No, no, I, I didn't say woman. I said man. You said you. Included. No, no, before that, before that, you said we don't know if she got a word to come. That's why I'm, that's why I was going to interject, but I let Judd lead because he knew you better than me. So I'm just saying now, listen to now, me carefully. 
Is there a man that you know of or a woman that you know of that when we listen to their ministry, it's crystal clear that God has put them in this position to teach that they got a calling? I can't say a woman, but I can't say a man. There, there are, I believe there are men that have been What's called. His name? What's the man's name that you know? What's his name? Um, Pastor Williams, actually. One, one of my pastors here locally. He may not be famous, but I mean, he was what called. Chief you? God. Go ahead. What state are you in? I'm in Mississippi. So in Mississippi, he's teaching the word of God as the scripture says? Correct. He keeps the Sabbath day? I mean... I can't say everybody keeps the Sabbath day. What I believe in the no, Sabbath day. No, does he is, keep the Sabbath day the way the Bible says, yes or no? You, you're going off doctrine. You're going off. Does he keep the about, Sabbath the way the Bible says, yes or no? It's a simple yes or no question. I'm not saying a doctrine. The Bible says, honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. Is he doing that, yes or no? Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. You, so you, you're going off exact doctrine. You, you live in like. Like how they did when Moses wrote the this and that. I can't I can't quote exact scriptures myself, but when they wrote like law, you living off law. See, what me personally, the stuff that Moses did, made, those leaders were made. distorting it. They were making traditions and commandments of men. They were making things up. That's why Christ said, "Do as they say, but not as they do." That's Matthew chapter twenty three. He called them hypocrites. I'm asking you, does he follow the laws of God? Yes or no? I can't speak for any man or what any man does, but what I can say is that the topic Jeff, that we're on. Just not say man, that uh, he knows that Pastor Williams in Mississippi has been called by God to do this, Judge. I can't say I know anything, but what it, based off what he said, as, I mean, as his, exactly him, his story, said, and he, he's current. You know, sir. that's exactly what he said, and and so what what a one what a one is trying to say. Is when somebody said there's called they're called of God, then they would do the things that God tells us to do. He, it wouldn't be in opposition to what the scriptures say. So if a man was called by God, he wouldn't be called to go against the Bible. So hey. Jesus Christ kept the Sabbath day, correct? Correct. Paul after Jesus Christ, he kept the Sabbath day. The disciples after Christ kept the Sabbath day, correct? Correct. So does your pastor keep the Sabbath day? I I can't speak for what he does because I don't know I'm exactly. I'm asking you. I'm asking good. you. You you go to the but church, right? What day y'all go to church? We go on Sundays. Is that the Sabbath day? So uh, based off what you're saying, are you saying the Sabbath day is on a Saturday? Listen to what I'm asking you. I'm just asking questions, and when when people ask questions, and when, instead of someone asking the question, you try and insert what they're trying to say is because I'm, you're trying to run from the I'm, question okay you ask, for, for ask, a clear me, understanding, ask me if i is, keep the sabbath day ask me if i keep the sabbath day okay my question is what is ask, what ask is me, ask me if i keep the sabbath day ask me do you keep the sabbath day yes i keep the sabbath day holy right so okay. i ask you about your pastor does he keep the sabbath day what is your idea of the sabbath day see, is it, see, that's the thing you could you could just say yes or no I mean, I can say yes or no, but I'm asking you well, what is your idea of the Sabbath day. If I, if I don't have a clear understanding of what, you, what your Sabbath Does day Does your pastor is. keep the Sabbath day? I would like to say yes. Okay. okay. If I say yes. Hey, yeah, he keeps the Sabbath day. Right. right. Okay. Now, so how do you keep the Sabbath day holy according to the scriptures? By doing no work on that day. What else? By I mean, by keeping do, doing no work on that day. I can't, I can't call it exact scriptures, but I can, based off of my knowledge, what I know is that you are not supposed to do work on that day can you can you cook on that day you're not supposed to okay what about buy and sell on that day you're not supposed to do y'all do do y'all do that like is that i mean it, i mean we, that, we, if you do, your, I, do I, I, I do your, buy and sell listen, listen real quick day. if your pastor that's called of god i mean i mean god dealt with him differently than he dealt with other people i mean he went out of his way to speak to your pastor, should your pastor be teaching y'all how to keep the Sabbath day? I mean, he should. I, I can't say every man is perfect or every church is perfect, but what I can say is that the man has been called to preach, with the, or else he probably wouldn't be in that position. Well, they or got a lot of people who preach for various reasons. A lot of people preach to make money, for authority. You know, a lot of people free, preach because their dad was a preacher. You know, a lot of people sit up in that pulpit for a lot of different reasons. So you can't just say, you know, um, you know, he wouldn't be there if he wasn't. There's a lot of wicked pastors. I mean, I, so, mean, this, this, I mean, this is a small church I'm talking about. I'm not talking it about the matter with the size of the church. The church size of the church don't matter. You know, he, the priest, 
Give me that Malachi chapter two, verse seven. This this is what your pastor that's called as God is supposed to be doing. You're right. He's supposed to be teaching this right here. Malachi two and seven. Malachi chapter two and verse seven. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth. Read. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So your your pastor, if he called by God, he should be teaching the laws of God because he's the messenger of God. So he should be teaching y'all the laws. Right? So, now, so, like, so do we live strictly by law? Because law. I thought by Jesus Christ dying on the cross that the law was made omit. So that means I can kill. If you when you get no, 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 married, no, I can no. have sex with your wife. That's what you tell me. No, no, no. I'm okay. saying the law, the law. The I mean, law. Adultery the was a law. Adultery was a law, right? See, so you're saying so, that once you get married, it's okay for your wife to see. So you put words in my mouth. You put words you, in my mouth. That's brother, not what I. Brother, just stop. like you said, I was, I was trying to stop, do to you. Stop real quick, brother. That's what just you're doing stop. to me. Well, just wait. Just calm down. Just relax. Just relax. Okay. Now, you said that the because of Christ, the law is omitted. That's what you just said, right? So when, when I say law... I'm asking you, I'm just asking you if that's what you said, brother. Because I don't want to put words in your mouth. Did you just say that? I mean, I said the law was made on me as in the law. Like, as in following all those things that, that God told Israel to do. Like, right? Like, those things. Now, the God okay. had that we're supposed to follow. So, question. Go ahead. Was adultery a law? That is a law. Okay. Do we have to keep that now? Well, yeah, we, should, we still have to keep that. Okay. It was murder a law. Correct. Do we still have to keep that? Correct. Was the Sabbath day a law? Correct. Do we still have to keep it? Correct. So, uh, what, so what's the contention then? Okay. So what I'm saying is that I, I'm not I'm not a, a perfect um, Bible scholar or, or, or scripture quoter, but what I'm saying is by Jesus Christ dying on the cross, some things were made omit. When you say law, I think of the all the things that God gave Israel to do about um, you know, sacrifices and all these different things that you know or were made omit. That's what well, I'm saying. Well, that's that's true. Because but, we, but, we, but, we but, real, but real fast, real fast. I'm sorry, but we're in a conversation. Hold on, real, now. hold on, real quick. What you just said is true, because that's written in the Bible. In Hebrews 10, it tells us that the blood of bulls and goats would not make us perfect and that Christ was that perfect sacrifice. So what you're saying is in the Bible, right? So right. what law besides that was omitted? Because the law, every law that we was just talking about had nothing to do with the temple or sacrifice. So I don't but, know why you said but, that. But I th what I think we're doing, we're straying away from the conversation at hand. Are, are you, okay, I have a question. I, just, I need a yes or no answer. So has are there men here on earth today that have been called by God to preach? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so so what was the contention like, from the beginning when I said there was a man that has been called to preach, even though he doesn't may not keep the Sabbath how we should, or we may not follow the law perfectly how we should. How how he has he not been called? Because well, we as men are, well, are perfect. If he was, if he was called, perfect. he would be teaching us what the Bible says. We can't I mean, say he, I, you but, can't say I'm called of God and then I teach contrary to the word of God. That doesn't, he doesn't teach contrary to the word. Well, you was, but he, he was but making he it make like he did. So ha have you bought or sold on, on the Sabbath day? Do you buy or sell on the Sabbath day? I have before I came into the knowledge that I'm not supposed to do it. Since I've since the last what ten years, I have not bought or sell on the Sabbath day. I, I'm, I'm not trying to take it too contrary, but did, did um, Jesus not heal on the Sabbath day? That's not that's not the same thing. Healing uh, on the Sabbath, not. no, no, no. Healing on the Sabbath day is not um, what word I'm looking for. Why well, I can't think of the word? It's not. I'm, I'm not coming with contention. I I just disagree with well, with, with the, whatever A said. Jesus Christ about broke the me Sabbath not being called. You're saying that Jesus Christ broke the Sabbath day, then? I, I didn't say he broke the Sabbath day. I, I believe that he stuck to the Sabbath day and he did what he was supposed to do on the Sabbath day. You you putting words in my mouth? You saying you saying these different things that that? Well, okay. but, my, but my my issue at hand was when he said that no 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 men are called to. No, he didn't say that. He didn't. Never, he did not say that. 
he asked you, he was going, he was saying the exact same thing that I said. He was going, I know exactly where he was going with that. If he was called, then he would be preaching the word of God the way as it is written. So, if, so do you preach the word of God? The word of God as it's written, then he ain't called. And if y'all ain't keeping the Sabbath day on the seventh day, like the scripture says, then I don't see how he can be called. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, you can still be called even though you aren't perfect. Because, I mean, there there are plenty of preachers out here that preach the word of God that aren't perfect themselves. That I mean, okay. Well, the, the devil Sabbath... speaks to a lot of people, too. You know, that's something that we got to realize, too. A lot of people hear voices. That don't mean it's God. So even if, so even I mean, he heard a voice, and it was definitely the devil that was trying to get him to do what? To bow uh, down to him. Right. So, so just because you hear a voice and and somebody say, oh, yeah, I was called a guy and then he could just be lying. I mean, people so, lie every day. So, so are you saying the only, that this way, one we thing can, the only like, way we can say that called somebody is called of God is if they're following God's words? That's the only way we could say it. Like if I said I'm born again, I can tell you I'm born again all day. But if, if I tell you I'm born again and I beat my wife, am I born again? So you're saying if you're, if you're born again, you beat your wife, are, are you born again? So, so does, does it make I'm saying, I'm saying if I say I repented from the way I used to be and I used right. to beat my wife and I still right. beat my wife, does that make sense? No, it, that doesn't make sense at all. It don't make sense. So if you're going to say you called to God and your whole church, you just like the, re, the way you're saying it, when we say the Sabbath day, already in your mind, you know that the Sabbath day is the seventh day. You know it already. It's already in your spirit that that's the, the that Sunday is not the Sabbath day, right? right? But guess what? We were taught to follow the traditions of man to keep the Sabbath on Sunday or to go to church on Sunday. We've been taught that even though we know common sense, you get a baby or kid, once he gets what he can learn, he read the book, he'll tell you that that's not the seventh day of the week. That's the first day of the week. Y'all just celebrated Easter. At Easter, we a uh, Resurrection Sunday, as y'all call it now. And when we read in the book that we know it was the first day of the week. That was the first day of the week when this happened, when they went to the sepulcher and he wasn't there. So y'all know what the first day of the week is and y'all go to church on the first day of the week. So y'all don't keep the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week. You know this. You're just fighting against it. So I'm not fighting not fighting against it at all but but you but, know this you know saturday is the seventh day of the week correct okay my question is so right you do know that right because someone doesn't keep the sir, sir you do know this right correct okay so now you were making a decision to not follow the scriptures why i mean what can i say i mean i'm, I'm not perfect like the next okay. person now but, go to look, hebrews 10 so, 20. This, i'm gonna show so you this, I'm gonna show so you what the Bible. I'm gonna show you what the Bible says about not being perfect, right? Because there's a difference. Because some people struggle with things. Some men have lust issues, and they have to fight against those lust issues. Some people have a lying issue where they lie, and they're like, "Man, I don't know why I just lie for no reason whatsoever," right? Some people they like to fight, like it's just in their spirit. I want to fight. I want to punch somebody. They got anger issues. Some people struggle with things, right? But not right, right. the Sabbath day on Sunday. It's not something you struggle with. It's a decision you make. Read that Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So now you know that the Sabbath day is not Sunday. You know it is Saturday. You have the knowledge of the truth. Now, when you wake up in the morning on Sunday, on Saturday morning, you decide whether or not you keep the Sabbath. You decide whether you say, I'm going to go to church on Sunday and, and not on Saturday. You make a conscious decision. So it's not that you struggle with it. It's not a battle that you have within. It's a decision that you make. So okay. you make a decision to not follow the scriptures, and your pastor makes a decision so, to teach you. So the, the, 
the, the thing is the thing is with when it goes come to going to church you can go to church on a monday i mean it doesn't yes, have you to can be it you doesn't know? have to be yeah it doesn't have to be described as a you can go to church day. any day of the week you can go to church right. every day of the week but god said that the sabbath day was separate he made right. that day holy so do, the, the, do you make saturday holy i can't say that i, I perfectly do yeah you don't because you decide not to it's not that it's a struggle you decide not to do it because you know right from wrong and that's right. what we're saying your pastor know right from wrong he know it so if he called by god he gonna teach god words because he was supposed to be the messenger of god and god said that the sabbath day was set apart it was a sacred day a holy day and we should keep it holy and if he ain't teaching that god didn't send him and that is what it so is he not be preaching is that what you're saying no. because because because, because he doesn't keep the Sabbath day and he doesn't exactly preach it the Sabbath day. That one thing that he should not be in, in position to preach the word of God. God did not call him because. No, 100% he, he should. Huh? No, no, he didn't. So you're saying God didn't call him? No. No, no. Go to Ezekiel 22, verse 26. I'm going to show you what, 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 where your pastor is in the Bible. Ezekiel 22, verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 26. Hello? Hello? Read the scripture, John. John, are you there or are you on mute? Hey, John, are you sleeping or what, man? Get up, man. Stop playing games. I got it, Judge. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22 and verse 26. Her priests have violated my law. That's what your pastor does. He violates the laws of God by not keeping the Sabbath free. And I profane mine holy things. The Sabbath is a holy day, and he profaned it. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Read. Neither have they shown difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am profaned among them. That's your pastor in the Bible right there. Everything that just was written right there, that's the man that you say was called by God, but that's what he does. You know, does he teach y'all about the dietary laws, about clean and unclean foods? Clean and unclean. I mean, everything was made clean by, by Jesus. Christ. Where? Hey, well, did, okay, I can't preach the fact hey. Man, what, what you're teaching right now, I mean, I don't think it fully adds up because you're talking about dietary laws. I it's mean, there are no dietary laws. Everything made clean because, okay, I'm going to put it like this. I know, I know I can't quote the scripture, but what I can tell you is that, okay, God put out on the sheet in front of, of, one, of the, one of the people. I don't know who. You're talking about he put out the sheet, you're talking so about showed him animals. And Peter. And it, it, but when you read that with understanding, <laughs> it, you find out that he was talking about man. Because he says that in Acts 10, I think verse 22, he said that. You're talking I, about Acts. No, wait, 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 wait. You're talking about Acts. Acts that, that was made omit now. That, that, that's, that's out the window because Jesus Christ not, then died after that. That's, that's old. That, 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 that's made omit. You can't, you can't go off of that. Before Acts. What are you talking about? Jesus Christ died before Acts. Okay, I'm sorry. My bad. I'm thinking about um when, it, when it, the children of Israel. My bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. And in, in Acts chapter 10, he, he was given a vision. And then he explains what that vision is afterwards when he said, I've called no man common or unclean. It's not talking about food. But Christians, they like to um, take one scripture and go with it without reading the full context of the chapter. So that's not that's not correct. So if that's so what food, why you so still, what foods are unclean. What, what foods are unclean in your eyes? Uh, the foods that's described in Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14, that's unclean. Pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, catfish, rabbit. Um, what else? What else? I mean, we go on and go on to different foods that's unclean. Did he, did he not say that everything was made clean? Like you can eat what you want, but see, look in, no. in your eyes, if it's wrong, do not don't eat say it. that. Don't 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 eat it if, if it's wrong in your eyes. So that's sin. If no, you it's it. not wrong no. in my eyes. It's wrong in the eyes of God. It's not. I mean, see, what you're teaching right now is completely false doctrine. Some well, things I can agree with you on. You have to show me the scripture. Like, what God in, in the Bible, 
is I will speak to to these kind of conversations. Where does it say that? Say what now? Where does it say that those foods were made clean? Like I just said, in in the um, you know what I'm talking about. To tell him to uh, find the find the chapter that I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. I just go to Acts 10. Oh my goodness. No, 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 not Acts 10. I'm talking about uh, when he spoke to Peter. T- t- that is that. Then he was talking to Peter. Oh, well, okay. We'll go to That's that then. The problem. A lot of times y'all go with what Peter. y'all go with what the pastor told you, but you don't. I, I'm not going off what the pastor told me. I'm, I'm going off off the understanding that I read. All, all right. Go to Acts Peter. Peter. Peter what? Verse, um, start at verse 12. That's what he won't. No, start at verse 11. Acts 11. Acts chapter Acts. 10 and verse 11. Oh, go ahead. And saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Wherein were all the manner of four footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. That's what you want, right? Right. Continue. So what this, so what this shows continue. you right now. Continue. Don't stop right there. Continue. Uh, we, we definitely not going to stop here because the point is definitely after here. We ain't going to stop here. But what this definitely shows you that while he was walking with Christ, he did, they did, they kept the dietary laws even with Christ, right? Correct. Because he had not died. All right. All right. So you're saying after Christ died, it's okay for us to sin. I know I'm not saying it's okay for us to sin, but some things were wiped away, like those dietary laws. If if they're in your eyes. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if that's what this is talking about. Because he said, I have not, I have never eaten anything that is common. I want you to remember these words, common or unclean, right? Now, verse 17. Verse 17. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean. Now, he had a vision. He's trying to figure out what does this vision mean. Read. Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made an inquiry for Simon's house and had stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down and go with them. Well, hold on one second. We missed something. I want you to go up to verse... Uh, duh, 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 duh. Wow, what how do we miss this? What well, says this, he he had this vision three times, thrice. Where I'm looking at? Oh, I think it's verse sixteen, sir. Yeah, verse sixteen. Read that real quick. Acts chapter ten and verse sixteen. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received upon up again into heaven. So he saw this vision while he was in this vision. He saw this three times. Correct. Now, right. read back where you was at. Acts chapter 10 and verse 19. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, behold, three men seek thee. Now he got this vision where something happened to him three times. And while he was thinking on the vision, the vision, the spirit said unto him, behold, Three men seek thee. Read. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them. Doubt ye nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man and one that fear of God and of good report among all the nation of the Jews was warned from God by an holy angels to send for thee into the house and to hear words of thee. And then verse 28, get to the point. Verse 28. And he said unto them, 
ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God have showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So what was that vision talking about? Was it talking about food or was it talking about man? It says man. There you go. That vision ain't had nothing to do with food. It's talking about man. Okay, so what about the verse that says, as one who is in the Lord, I am co fully convinced that no food is unclean in itself, but if anyone regards something as unclean, then for him, it is unclean. What's what, that? What, what, what you would, I think you in, uh, what, Romans? Or Romans what? What scripture are you in? Because that's talking about food that was um sacrificed. Romans 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 14 verse 14. Yeah, that's talking about food sacrificed to idols. That's what that's going into. That's not talking about unclean food. It's talking about food mm -hmm. sacrificed to idols. That's the chapter. Romans 14 and what? Mm -hmm. So we're not what, so we can read it. Romans 14, chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. 14 and verse 14. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. So it, this whole chapter is talking about food sacrifice to idols. And some people, they considered these things unclean, even though they wasn't. That's why when you start off at the beginning, start at verse one, Romans chapter 14 and verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith receives ye, but not to doubtful disputations. It's talking about people that's weak in the faith. Weak in the faith. Keep reading. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Go ahead. Another who is weak eateth herbs. What's that talking about? What's that going into? Somebody who believes you can eat all things and others that's weak, they eat. Right. But you have two different people. Some people, like you, believe that you can eat only, you know what I'm saying, certain things or certain things are made unclean. And you have no, other. No. That's not what that scripture is saying. Because I believe that you can eat meat, but just certain types of meat. This is going into something that happened. It says, for one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eat of herbs. What is that talking about? What are you, you saying? What I'm saying is, is y'all Christians throw away the Old Testament and you get the scriptures like this and you have no idea what it's talking about. Okay, all right. So, so let's continue to read. Let's go to four or five. Come on. No, let's, right. let's, no we can't pass a point and we which nobody understands and then go okay. to, go further in the chapter. Okay. Make, you, make, understand make, it. you have to know what this is talking clear. about. Make your point clear. All right. Let's go. Let's see. Let's go to let's go to Daniel. No, 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 no. Let's not, let's not skip over Romans 14. Well, I like what it's, I, 14, you want me, we're going to get an example. Do, do you want me to read? Do you want me to example of what, brother, you don't know what you're talking about. And you're in, a, you're in a place, you're in a place where you're not equipped. This, your sword this is, is not sharp enough, right? Listen, so you should listen. listen. That's what I, you should be think, doing, brother. You okay. should be trying to challenge me. Because you don't know time, what you're time, talking time, about. Let me read. Let me read, let me read because Romans fourteen is what, what exactly, exactly what we're talking yes, about, right? Yes. Yes. So tell me, me what me, verse two means. Tell let, me let what me verse two is talking about. If you let can me, explain let me, verse two, then you need to just relinquish the mic. What okay. is verse two talking about? Okay. One man's faith allows him to eat everything, but another man whose faith is weak only. Wait, wait, what does it say? One man's faith allows him to eat every everything not not just not just certain don't things. Say that. it says for one believeth that he may eat all things another who oh. weak eateth herbs what is that talking about well, exactly what it's saying one well, read it again and let me know if you understand i definitely one, understand read it again for one believeth that he may eat all things all what does it say all not some all yeah all. i got it. all things Okay, Another all, who is all right. who is weak, and, and listen, eat listen, of listen, earth. What is that talking about? It's saying that is that it says exactly what what it says. What what is what is what do you comprehend otherwise? What do you comprehend? It's saying that he is weak in the faith. What faith faith is he weak in? The faith, as in the faith of Christ, as in the faith okay. of Christ. If he, so he why, why would somebody who is weak in the faith of Christ 
eat just eat herbs. He would only eat vegetables because that's what Daniel did. That's what the Why Jews told Daniel, him. Why did Daniel just eat vegetables? You about to uh, because, because that was part of his law. That was before. No, Christ that was Christ. not a part of his laws. It was a that reason was, why he just Jews. ate vegetables. He ate only vegetables because he was a Jew. He was looking for power for the Lord. He ate only vegetables because he wanted God to be pleased with him. That's, he not, said, well, that's definitely not the reason why. It's because why, why he, didn't he, want, he didn't want to eat food that he was didn't want sacrifice to, eat to other he gods. He didn't want to eat the king's food. Right. Why didn't he want to eat the king's food? I don't know why he didn't want to eat because the it was food, sacrifice but... to other gods. But let's continue to read, though. I, I like what it said. <laughs> hey, somebody want to deal with this dude? Somebody else yeah. deal with him. Hey, Jim, I to... think this is it, for real. All right, just let me read then. This, this is the last thing I want to say. I just want to read. Can I read? Now nah, we got a reader. What scripture you want him to read? Because I think I think I feel like you read another version of the Bible too. Uh, no. Okay. Let me see. Romans. I'm gonna go to Romans 14, King nah, James. We're... I... We we we'll, we we'll let our reader read it. That's the way we run the room. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Understand? Decent order. All right, let's see. Well, where are we? We Romans fourteen, starting at verse one. Read the verse seven. Romans chapter fourteen and verse one. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another. Who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God have received him. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? Amen. To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Amen. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. Amen. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. Amen. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and give God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. Amen. Now that spoke for itself. I, I, I should not explain. If you want to change it up, how you want to go ahead. Get out. No, that, that did not explain anything. It didn't explain anything. I, I don't know what y'all read, man. I'm going to let hey, y'all have I, I understand why you believe that, because that's what the white man taught your um, pastor, and he taught your pastor to teach you that. No, he didn't teach me that. But I read by you, myself. From my, give, I came from my understanding. So, given, what, so what, what does it say? Of any of that. What does it say? Of any of what that. Does it say? Read the word. Read what, what it's talking saying. about. You have no idea what those scriptures are talking about. You it just, says it's right you, there. You're basically it's saying that. that. So, so you mean to tell me that the day that the Lord set up is not that we? It's, that's not good anymore. That mean I, you, I mean you could just pick. Who are you to judge? Who are you to judge? I mean, you should just pick whatever day you want to, to serve the Lord, even though God said, remember the Sabbath day. And the All right. That was you right. saying, right? Okay. That, is that what you're saying? I just want to know if that was you saying, yes or no. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. But what, what does the word okay. say? But I guarantee you that you don't, what does the word say? You don't, I guarantee you that you don't follow Resurrection Sunday any day you want to. What, what, what does, I guarantee what does the you word when say? you celebrate Christmas, you don't celebrate Christmas on whatever day you want to. Hey, listen, I, I, can I celebrate, guarantee when you celebrate I, 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 New Year's, you don't celebrate New Year's any day you want to. I, I can celebrate you, Christmas you, on July you, 4th if I wanted to. But you don't. It's all, it's all in but you don't do it. You don't. You do exactly what your slave master tell you to do. I don't. I don't. I don't believe. I don't even believe you keep you keep I, all his feast God, days the way he tell you to do I believe it. But the Bible says myself. that the Sabbath day is on the seventh day and you don't follow God. Just why you ain't called and your past ain't called. And if you don't repent, you're going to die. It is what it is. You Who are you to judge? Judge? What does the word say? Who are you they judge? got a whole book called Judges. A lot of y'all Christians crazy. Y'all be like, you can't nobody judge me. That's a Tupac song. Are, are you a, a Tupac are, song. Are you, that's a Tupac song. We suppose if I love you, I'm supposed to tell you if, if you're wrong. Go not to Isaiah 58 wrong. verse not one. If, not Read if you Isaiah teach 58 wrong. verse one, because y'all Christians got the game messed up. Can't nobody judge you. That's why it's so much wickedness no. going on in the church, because can't nobody tell nobody they wrong. 
That's what's going on. So, so if somebody wrong, you can't tell them nothing. All right. gonna say, you All can't right. judge me. Right? So that means just like what I said earlier, if your wife's sleeping with another man, you can't say nothing to her because you right. can't judge her. Okay, Read that. Second. Isaiah 58, I'm verse sorry. 1. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Isaiah what? chapter 58 and verse 1. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression. And show my people what? Show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to show our people their transgressions. That's what we're supposed to do. But according to the Christian church, we got to listen to all eyes on me and go with only God can judge me. With the tattoos that people got on their body, only God can judge me. Only God can judge me. They got a whole book called Judges. I don't know what Bible y'all read. Christ judged people. The apostles judged people. When they was wrong, they told them they was wrong. Like what? It, it, that don't make any sense to me. You go to church to not be told that you're going against God. So what y'all go to church for? What do y'all do at church? Do y'all talk about sinners? Do y'all talk about people that's supposed to go a certain way? Or do y'all just sit in the church and be like, hey, it don't matter what nobody doing. You can't judge them. So don't tell them they wrong. Just tell them Jesus loves me, everyone, everyone. <laughs> it don't make no sense. I don't get it. It just make no sense. Go to um, Ecclesiastes chapter 45, verse 26. I'll read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 45, verse 26. God give you wisdom in your heart to judge his people in righteousness that their good things be not abolished and that their glory may endure forever. So guess what? We supposed to judge our people with righteousness. Righteousness is God's laws, statutes, and commandments. But guess what? Y'all don't believe in that in the Christian churches. Y'all believe that you don't have to follow the law no more. So when they, if you get mad and your wife busting it open, just tell her Jesus wept. Everything you're speaking right now, I mean, I just, I just have one question. So the Bible says, I can't, I can't tell you exactly where you should know because you, you seem to be a, a bit of a scholar. So I'm not a scholar. What, 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 when, when, but when the Bible, when he, when he says, um, I can't tell you exactly where or who said it, but when it says that we shouldn't have these kind of conversations like we're having now, as in like, you know, these disputes about what the Bible says or about doctrine, I mean, that, what, what does that say about you? What, what does it say about us? Says, the, the scripture says to contend for the faith. It says, debate your cause. What are you talking about? That's Christianity. That's Christianity is what you're talking about. They they debated their cause. It says that. It says, contend for the faith. Matter of fact, let's get the scriptures right here. Correct. It does say contend for the faith. I mean, I, I can agree with that. But I mean. So, so what are you saying then? Are we supposed to contend for the faith? Or are we not supposed to contend for so the faith? You, you take, you're taking it to different debate levels. I'm see, not debating you. I'm teaching you. You need you to learn. Anything. I mean, what, what we just read. Back in Romans, I mean, that's exactly you don't understand what that. Romans. About. You have you, I asked you to explain what one scripture meant, and you couldn't. I just explained um, what, what, what does it mean to you? What does that one scripture mean to you? It was it, Romans 14, verse 2, I believe, wasn't it? Romans 14, verse 2. Foods. They didn't eat certain foods because they believed that these things were um sacrificed to idols, so they didn't eat certain foods. We weren't that's talking the, about we talk, verse 14. Foods. Romans 14, verse 2. I'm sorry. That's what we read for Romans 14, verse 2. Okay. And so what were we saying? They were, we weren't talking about idols. We weren't talking about none of that in Romans. We're talking about one man can eat everything or all things, all. What, what is all? What does all include? All things that were given to us to eat. It don't say that. Well, what? what well, why would you eat things that wasn't given to you to eat? I mean, okay. Get, go to Isaiah 66 and show the prophecy. This is the thing, y'all. If you y'all Christians don't read the Bible, if you don't read the Old Testament, then you'll never understand the New Testament. I do read Old Testament. I read Old and New. Right now, watch this. We're gonna read a prophecy in the Old Testament that what to show you what Christ gonna do to people when He returns. That's eating abominable foods. How about that? You know about that scripture? Let's go. Go to it. What, okay. what, what is it? So I can read for myself also. All right, Isaiah sixty-six. What started verses seventeen? Isaiah. 
chapters 66 and verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree Start in the midst. Verse, uh, verse 15. I think this for, one. I'm not looking at my Bible. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. So, brother, how is the Lord going to come back and destroy the earth this time? Is it going to be with water or is it going to be with what? It's going to be with fire. With fire. So this is talking about prophecy. It's saying this what's going to happen when Christ returns. Keep reading. They that sanctify themselves. Sanctify and themselves. That means they do it themselves. They make things clean unto themselves. Read. They that, no, and, no, 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 no. no. They and purify sanctify. themselves. Because you can't sanctify yourself your, you by yourself in your own ways. You have to go by what God says to make yourself sanctified. Read. And purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. Eating swine's flesh. Eating swine's flesh, which is unclean. And the abomination. Like and the crab and lobster is an abomination. Read. And the mouse. And the mouse are like possum or nutrirat, people that eat that kind of stuff. What's going to happen to them? Shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. They're going to die. So you can eat unclean foods all you want. But when Christ returns, you're going to be burnt with fire. That's what the scripture says. So you saying that that prophecy is null and void? I can't say that it's null and void. Yeah, so just stop. But well, what, what I'm saying is if, if you believe that that is unclean yourself and then that that, that, that is sin unto you. So listen, if, if I believe that, you know, um, sitting on wooden chairs is a sin, not, not in my head, and that's engraved in my head that that is a sin and I should not do that. And I go sit on the wooden chair and God knows that I believe that that's a sin. Then that's a sin unto me. I I, I believe that's a sin, but I don't fully believe you can't make up that what your sin is. I believe that I believe that everything. And what is you just clean. said really explained that scripture. You had certain men that believed things unto themselves were wrong, but they wasn't wrong according to God. That's exactly what that whole chapter is talking about. Thank you. I'm glad you just brought that up. The whole chapter is about men that made things unclean. Oh, no, it's about men things that made men cl clean. What were you talking about? I, you just talking, talking about clean. What you just said is what themselves. that's talking about, is that people thought that things weren't clean. That's why Daniel, he just ate herbs, because he felt that the food that the king's meat, it was unclean because they was, were sacrificing it to idols. So he didn't eat law. it. That was his right? law. He that is what, law, what law says that? That was his law. That, that was no, his no, law. no, no, no. What the, the law of God? He was where is that written in the laws of God that you couldn't eat that? What, what do you mean? You're contradicting yourself right now. You're asking, asking where is it written in the laws I'm of God? I'm asking you a question. Where does it say it's written that you couldn't eat that food? Um, Let's see. Was, was it Deut Deuteronomy? What was he talk, what was he talking to the uh, well, you children of Israel? You, we're talking about Daniel. Correct. Where, well, so what, what? So why didn't he eat the food? Because it was unclean. Because he, he, didn't, he didn't want to eat the king's food. He was a Jew. It didn't say. It didn't say that though. It didn't say the food. All right. Huh? All right. Continue talking. Whatever you're talking about, I'm gonna go find it. It's in Daniel one. You can read it. I was trying to go there and you stopped me. Go ahead. So you want me to go there now? Go ahead if you want to. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm, I'm asking you. You said go, go ahead. Here. I'm saying go ahead. You go want there. Me to go there now. You don't want me to go there. All right, go to Daniel chapter 1, verse 10. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 10. And the prince of the Enoch said unto Daniel, I fear, my, I fear my lord the king, who have appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse like than the children which are of your sort? Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. 
Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us posts to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat, and the wine that they should drink, and gave them posts. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king communed with them. And among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So it Therefore, knows about, about the food being unclean. Go so to first I, eight real quick. Start at verse one. First Kings chapter eight and verse one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up, hold up, hold up real fast. I'm sorry. Let me backtrack real fast. Are you there? So uh, Daniel 8. Did we skip over Daniel 8? Daniel made up in his mind to eat and drink only what God had approved for his people to eat. So who is his people? What scriptures say that? For Daniel Daniel 1 verse 8. Go read. We just read it. You started at verse 10. Okay, go to verse 8. Yeah. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore. Okay. So hold up, hold up. Why wouldn't he drink the wine? Because he was a Jew in, in, in his law. Jews drink wine. I mean, I'm saying, but the king's meat, he didn't want to defile okay, no, himself. No, 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 because you can't separate the two, right? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You can't separate the two. Why wouldn't he drink the wine? He didn't want to eat the king's meat either. Why didn't he drink the wine? You can't I, separate the two. I, I can't say that the king did sacrifice food unto idols. Indeed, exactly, exactly. That's the reason why he didn't want to eat the meat or drink the wine. Golly, man, y'all okay, be fighting. Right, right. Okay, so, 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 really fight. so, so the food, the so the food, so the food that we eat. I need to stop it, fighting the Bible. Now, watch so this. So go the food, the go I'm ahead. You, go First Kings chapter eight and verse First one. First Corinthians chapter okay. eight. First Corinthians chapter eight and verse one. Now, as touching things offered unto idols. We know that we all have knowledge, knowledge puffed up, but charity edified. But when we read in first Corinth in uh, Romans, was it 14? It says some are weak in the faith. Keep right. reading. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world. So people that have that knowledge, they know that idols are nothing. There's no right. such thing as an idol. They're not real. Read. It's false. You can't eat and that there is none other God but one. And there's only one God. There's only one God. Read. For thou there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. But to us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are our things are we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things and we are by him. Howbeit, there is not in every man that knowledge for some which conscience of the idol unto this our eat it is as a thing of feared unto an idol and their conscience being weak is defiled 
it's, it's, it says, how be it there is not in every man that knowledge. For some with conscious of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol. So he's talking about people that don't have the knowledge that's only one God, right? Because he was dealing with the Gentiles. So they were raised under these customs of things being offered on the idols. These were things that they struggled with. You can read about that in Acts 20. They struggled with things offered on the idols and stuff like that. This was the problems they had. They didn't, they didn't have the same mindset of the people that didn't grow up that way. So guess what? Some people, they didn't want to eat certain foods or drink certain things because it was offered unto idols. And it says, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Right. Verse eight, read verse eight. But meat commanded us not to God. For neither it, if we eat, are we the better? Neither if we eat not. And we are the worse. Are we the worse? And so it's saying it's letting you know that nothing. If, if a person just want to eat herbs, they can eat herbs. And if a person eat meat, they can eat meat. It's not one better than the other verse nine but take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak but us that know that guess what things offered unto idols ain't nothing you walk into a, a asian um restaurant and they got their little buddha um doll up there some people may be like hey we can't eat here we're like there ain't nothing hey that's nothing but a little plastic doll that's not real or you walk into a place that they got a picture of the Virgin Mary on the wall and people might be like, look, we can't eat up in here. You know, this stuff right here, this, this is offering the idols. These other gods, this idolatry in here, we can't eat there. The scripture says, don't let your liberty, you knowing that these idols are nothing, be a stumbling block to them that are weak. So if somebody's weak like that, until they get the understanding, that same understanding as you, it's best for you not to eat there either. Because you'll be a stumbling block to them that are weak. Verse 10. For if any man see thee which has knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? And through, the, and through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. Right. So that person compares because they're going to think that y'all sitting in there and y'all breaking the commandments of God. So it's going to take them from God. So you got to make sure that he gets the understanding that, look, these idols ain't nothing. It's no big deal. But if he ain't got that understanding, you shouldn't eat there with him. What's that other scripture I want where he said? Um, so so real fast, real what? fast. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, but. Um, it cut but me you off. You as you as a leader, right? You you're, you're the leader of this discussion, right? But um, yep. in, in Titus three verse nine it says, "But don't have anything to do with stupid arguments about ancestors, and stay away away from discussions and quarrels about the law of Moses." Well, and I don't know arguments what, are useless and senseless. So, reading, uh, we read the King James. So I, I, I can I can also read King. Let's read. Avoid in. foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law for they are unprofitable and vain so why are you debating with me if you are a called leader to and this is not to debate why is why is this if that's the angle that we're taking on, on um leaders following so things correctly that scripture is saying that if you don't have a good understanding of something i should just say oh well no, it, it, then what we got pastors for then? What the pastor supposed to be doing? Well, it, it, are you saying that's what the what the verse says? No, I'm not. I'm definitely saying that's not what the verse says. Read the scripture. Titus, chapter three and verse nine. It's crazy that when you're in the middle of something and you're being found wrong, and so now you go find. I'm a not. Scripture. I'm not at all being found <laughs> wrong. I mean, then now you go find conversation. Says, conversation. You want. I you shouldn't. Want to I shouldn't. You like. I shouldn't be um, going getting on to you about this because the Bible says that you but, should avoid things like this. What's foolish about me trying to tell you that you should keep the commandments of God? 
I mean, it's nothing foolish about you saying you, I should keep the commandments of God, but when some right. of the things we that you're saying God. are contradictory, we, we not God, 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 some things you are saying in truth, but some things you're saying are, are in a lie. You te- you can't kind of conform to things to your own words and to your I'm own. Not, everything I everything I said, I read scriptures to back it up. I mean, you've read scriptures, but you're choosing different scriptures that you want to, you know, play around on. You can well, do that too. That, you, that want too. To lose. you want me to read the whole Bible tonight? I'm not saying you should read the whole Bible, but what I'm saying is you, if you're going to speak it in truth, speak it in truth and don't just choose what you want to choose to make you sound right. I well, mean, I'm not a perfect well, scholar of the of the Bible, well, but the what I can agree with, I, do, I just like. The half. scripture says that precept must be upon precept. If we go into a chapter of the Bible, you it's other it's other places in the Bible where it's explained. That's why we went to Daniel and Daniel explained that because that's what happened in the past, right? That's why when we went into that, we went to First Corinthians eight. It went into what people felt about eating food sacrificed to idols and things like that. Um, you know, uh, matter of fact, it's another scripture where it's, it's going to it go into the same thing uh, where it says, it says, I'm afraid of you. Uh, what's that? I got to find it. Uh, da, 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 da. Somebody help me out. Uh, Galatians 4, 11. I feel like um, this this is your, you know what I'm saying, teaching place, you feel me? And I think you are teaching the people, you know what I'm saying, whatever you want to teach them, but however you do it, I you mean, know what I'm saying? I, I really don't mind. I mean, it's on you. I just came in and I caught something that somebody else said that wasn't fully correct. And then I, ever since then, you've been wanting to debate with me on different topics. It started from, you know what I'm saying, me saying that a man of God was called to next about food that you wanted to debate about. You wanted to talk about that. But I mean, you know, I I really don't, you know what I'm saying? I can't debate about the man of his own house within his own house because it seems that they follow you, you know what I'm saying, as to what you say and your things that you say, you know what I'm saying? You sound wise, you sound like you know different things. You can quote different verses, but I mean. Why do, why do Christians make it seem like it's a bad thing to quote scripture? Not, not at all. It's not at all. Nobody, every, you, I've never it, heard anybody say crazy. Christian, when you when you quote it that, to make that, that, is a, that is a problem to quote scriptures. Christians say that. That is so crazy to me that ever since we've been on this app and we know the scriptures, Christians say stuff like, the devil know the Bible too. Well, just because you can quote all the scriptures, that don't mean nothing. I mean, you would just use the same should, verse, you're saying you the same thing yourself. To, you should be able you to just, quote scriptures, bro. You were just using the same thing. I mean, I'm not saying there's anything all, at all bad about quoting Yeah, you should know the Bible. How old are but you? But you make yourself sound right, I mean. I'm not that, making myself sound right. I'm reading the Bible and what the Bible says. The, the debate that we were just on was talking about food. And you go back and you if you read that Romans 14 for yourself and read exactly what it says and pray for an understanding of meaning and see if he gives you what. You yeah, to it, it did. It, oh. it sent me to First Corinthians eight. It sent me to Daniel's one. That's why I said you should rightly divide the word of truth. It sent you to Galatians four. It sent you to all these different places that's talking about the exact same thing. That's why the Bible says precept must be upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. The Bible mates itself with other places in the Bible that gives the understanding of the scriptures. That's why the scripture says, through my precepts, I get understanding. But when you isolate scriptures and you just read a scripture, then you'll never get the understanding of it. And that's so, it. But so, it's all right, bro. I, I hope you, I just pray that you keep starting. So, keep-